What's up, everybody? Great to see you. What's happening, beautiful people (laughs) of the world? Of the world. Tonight, I felt like I wanted to do something different. Yeah. And that was hold the mic, just for a little bit. It looks good on you, though. I thought so. It's a little different, but hey. Is it on me? I thought I thought I actually broke my mic last week from suckling it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it was a moisture control the, the issue. The diaphragm was intensely. Yeah, it was that. Aer- it was. Aerogenius. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh so what we're going to do quick here tonight, folks, as you can see, uh, this is Thursday. This is Thursday Night Live. I'm Dana. That's Tim. We're going to tie some flies. We're going to tie two flies tonight. The Muda. Muda Puda. Puda. Quick pictures here. Tim's got some photos. The Muda Puda. And a classic. The, uh, That's upside down. <laughs> Royal Wolf. Royal we were going to do the upside down Royal Wolf, but I suggested we just yeah. turn it around. Yeah, since, I, since last <laughs> week we had a lot of calls from people the next day saying uh, that perhaps the um, the candy of choice that night <laughs> didn't may go. May have been a spicy something. Didn't go super didn't well. Didn't go as well. So remember, guys, as we get going, we're going to do a giveaway I'm done with this mic. I don't like holding don't like it. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, everybody takes me back to the days when I used to go and travel around to bars and sing. Oh, yeah. You did a lot of that? No. No? No. <laughs> oh, let's, a quick question. A guy, a what, guy, were the, what were the audience sizes? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was always af- like I went in for after sales. Oh, okay. And then you, I you, asked you. if I could have the stage. Like you heard me last week. I, I know. That's why I was curious how big the audience I've, was. I I've thought it'd booked be sold up, out. I'm booked up for the next six weeks <laughs> for after sales singing. Uh, yeah, I get it's, it. I go. It's Well, they call it the graveyard shift. So it's right. uh, 3 a.m. until 8 a.m. <laughs> They open at 8 for breakfast, and they uh-huh. just don't think I should be singing for the people at 8 a.m. No, I mean, I get it. But the janitor, <laughs> he tips big. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, we know uh, we know, I cannot sing. No. Well, I don't know. Well, I think I can. can sing. Yeah, that's right. It's true. I mean, it's well, I guess that's a bigger question in life. Can you or can't you do something? Does it have to be well? Well. No. No. What sounds good to you might not sound good to me. That's a good point. We talked about that earlier today. We did. And that's a good segue it is <laughs> into also. really good tasting beer. Yes. We're doing yes. a giveaway. 
in 13 seconds. 12, 11. And folks, we got the Riverfest back. 8, 7. We want to welcome Bow River Brewing back to the party, to the TNL fam. But before yes. we get into that stuff, yeah. I hope Eric Augustin is here because... He is. He's right there. He's already got numbers down. Because, <laughs> folks, I got to switch mics. Hold tight. Do it. Just get, get that out of, your, out of your hands. He looks so uncomfortable with it. Well, oh, look at this. There you Do go. Do I sound better? I... No. Sound. I was singing earlier was this good. week for my. I was getting ready for my, for my off sales. Oh yeah, yeah. Show. Yeah. And now I just gotta figure out my position. But <laughs> all right, all right, now let's go. We get tie flies. We gotta tie. This is kind of what our season looks like. <laughs> it's a bit of a blur. I hope it's, <laughs> it's been a blur, guys. It's been a blur. <laughs> we got a. There it is. Forty different patterns that we patterns. tie here on Thursday Night Live. Not all of them at once, but we tie them over the course. Somehow this isn't comfortable because I'm, I'm... You just threw off your game. Well, the reason I brought the handheld mic is because I'm practicing for the off-sales tour. I know, tour. I get it, I get it, but... OST, off-sales <laughs> tour. Okay, so right away, this is a giveaway. We're going to do this right away. So this is this is a, a book that we made. It's pretty it has awesome. all of those patterns that I just showed you guys, plus all of the recipes. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, so, so we're going to talk about what Tim's doing right now. If, if, so anyways, there's all of these flies that we're tying on uh, season four of Thursday Night Live with all of their recipes. Okay. It's awesome. Yeah. So I'm, we're going to give away one of these books. Uh, estimated value is invaluable. We got invaluable. some stickers. So this, this oh, is going to go in a quick... For it. He just doesn't like you today. Anyways, <laughs> if you guys aren't 14 beer deep, this actually is in focus, Mark Holcomb. Yeah, maybe what? you guys is yeah. this figure out what what is going on. What's what's the problem? Anyway, kind of sticker. Me. This sticker. Yeah, mine will do it. Boom. Boom. So That's we're just favorite. I'm just gonna keep passing them over. We know that. Uh, Boom. And this one. So That's close. a new one. That's a new one, Wait, folks. Wait, are you guys ready for this? This is so good. That's dope. Oh, there it is. Oh, Baking Cam Bob. Boom. Baking. Love it's not. We should just. This guy's name should just be Cam. Cam. Baking Cam. That's Baking, Baking Cam. There Baking it is. We've named Cam. him Baking Done. Cam right there. That's Baking Cam. He, he definitely eats a little bit of his own oh. produce. <laughs> I told you it was coming your way. <laughs> I uh, I brought along Harper Collins today. He's the shop dog yeah. tonight, and he has some spicy. The problem, uh, guys, because that dog I had to hunt with this year and last year, <laughs> and when the dog toots in the blind, the game <laughs> is over. So yeah, we're just gonna give that stuff away quick. We still are playing bingo. Yeah. So make sure you guys, if you haven't got your bingo, why are we still on this screen? I don't know. When we could be comments. over here hanging out with you guys and all of the comments. So, uh, oh, I can't even see straight. Like. <laughs> That is rank. <laughs> oh, man. He doesn't seem to mind. Okay, this is a giveaway, and it's nothing more than a number that I have on my screen. Yep. And it is between 100 and 400. Oh. First person to get the number, because you guys are going to see, we're gonna, it's going to come in hot and heavy. So yeah. it's not the first number that shows up. It's the first number we see. First between number we see. One and four hundred. Three, three, three. That's we'll just say number. that's very close. Okay, let's keep the comments. Oh, oh yeah, here we go. It's gonna come in hot. There was two three three threes by two people. Let them come, guys. Let them see. Closest to the number on the screen is gonna win it all. By closest, oh. I mean. Oh, oh, Sean Ellison's even closer. He's got both close ones. Yeah, but then he gets far away. Yeah. Uh, Chris Nelson, super close. Yeah, he's got it now. Third. Oh, I almost said the number. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking for it. <laughs> oh, man. All right, folks. You know what that means. The first person to hit this number gets these stickers and this book. Sean, we're, you're we're, doing so good. We're Shoulder still playing away. bingo. Marvin Carl, you're super close. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, we need, we need a winner. We need a quick one. winner. Come on, guys. Oh yeah, everybody's going the wrong oh, they're way. Going, they're going the wrong way. Chad's the wrong way. It's gonna happen. It's gonna, it's gonna happen. Oh, there you go, Andy. You're close. Oh, Come somewhere on. between Sean and Andy. <laughs> Sean's slowly Sean, coming back down. Sean's, he's gonna win because he's just—he's <laughs> just literally on his way down. All oh, right, man, guys, we're on. just trying to get this party started tonight by having some fun. We're gonna tie two flies: the Muda Puda and the Royal Wolf. Royal Wolf. See what happens when we get them to type in numbers. They can't I complain know. about your audio because what? Tell us about your audio today. My audio is amazing today. And then even <laughs> more amazing with that little thing on your cheek. Thanks to Mr. Blake himself. Oh, yeah. He hooked us up, folks. Big time hookup. He took care of Tim. And if the bad audio is a problem, then... Uh, We're going to figure it uh, out. Yeah. All right. Oh, man. I, people are so close. I, I think I'm dizzy. <laughs> oh, come on, it's gotta somebody. It's got to be in there. Come on, somebody. Hit the number. All right. Guys are close. Right. It's not clo is it close? They're like going well, the wrong way. Well, now they're going the wrong way. But there's been some close yeah, ones. There's been some close. That's Wrong way, hill it. Three oh five. Andy, split the difference. Split the difference. Brandy's close at three twenty one. I think that's the closest. No, yeah. Joel's at three twenty. Might even be closer. Marvin Carl's the closest. Oh, Marvin, he's going. Someone's close. gonna hit it. Gotta hit it. Gotta no, hit it. No, it's gotta hit it. Gotta hit it. Oh, Blake, you're so oh, close. Oh, Blake, you're killing us. <laughs> Come on. Oh, where are we at? Okay, oh, Tim, I'm gonna it. pass out. I'm so dizzy. Uh, oh, Dave, you're right on the other. You're oh, got it. So close. Somebody got it? No, Dave no. is really close. All right, all right. I love this. Oh, oh Claude. Man. Claude. Claude. <laughs> <laughs> you were in one off. Oh, man. There he goes. He got there it. There he got it. Nice job. There we go. We got Mr. a winner. Claude Delisle. He's and won. Just to prove to you guys, it won't focus here. <laughs> there it is. 315. Mr. Claude Delisle. Okay, you guys Claude. are oh, hip hopping all the way yeah, over top. Send us a message at. TNL at flyfishingbover.com and we're going to get you your stickers and your fly book yeah. recipe type thing. Type thing. So whatever that means. Uh, means it's pretty awesome. Yeah. So anyways, um, this is the kind of time after we catch up with... Oh, <laughs> oh man. <laughs> we were so behind. There's so There's, many comments. Oh, so many people probably won and we didn't even win. Oh, man. I never win on these games. Oh, there's so many 315s in there now. Oh, okay. There we, we are. Lucky. We're back to the good stuff here, folks. <sighs> we do tie flies. We have a lot of fun. We hope tonight you become a better fly tire, a better fisherman, but yeah. ultimately a better person when you leave here tonight. Yeah, hopefully. Yes. Eric, you might have got 315, but obviously you could see the disaster in the scroll. And yeah. uh, the we first one we that saw we saw it. was Mr. Claude. Uh, Claude, send an email, and I'm going to write that down because they usually <coughs> forget. Yeah, we'll get that off. You're gonna, we're still playing bingo, so if you guys have not got your bingo cards, make sure you go grab them. How em. do you get your bingo cards? You're going to need those to win some Tim. actually some really awesome prizes. And then later. why don't you tell everybody what Thursday Night Live is and yes. how if they want to really jump on full bore VIP special. Oh, yeah. How do they make that happen? Oh, it's easy. All right, guys, what is Thursday Night Live Fly Tying? Well, this is a community. This is a family. We come together once a week on Thursday. We do tie a couple flies, although that's not the main focus of what we do. Um, it is a pretty awesome perk. Uh, we, we tie flies every night, and we sit here, and we fellowship. Um, we hang out. We comment. You guys are, this is a fully interactive uh, type show where we want to hear from you the whole time in the comments, and we do our best to get, get to you. Um, but yeah, we, we come together once a week. We tie two different uh, two different patterns tonight. Like we said, we got two on the docket. Um, if you're lucky enough to have purchased in on a kit that looks something like this, it's actually not too late. If you do still want one of these suckers, uh, you can head on over to flyfishingboarder.com <coughs> backslash TNLS4, S4. and you can still purchase these today. Um, but what's in this kit and why we do this is because it makes your life a lot easier. So in each of these, um, each of these kits, we have each individual episode. Um, for instance, tonight we are going to be tying out of this guy here. So we're tying season four, episode six. You have both patterns already pre-tied for you in separate packages, as well as enough material to tie it one or two more times, um, which is pretty cool. It makes it uh, very easy for you. Why, why as do you a, say one or two? 
Well, just because it depends on how you tie. Like for instance, I might tie it and have enough material to tie it three or four times. Um, but for you, you maybe use a little bit more material than I did or, or whatever in that learning process. And so you, you only have enough to tie one, let's say. Um, we do always provide at least two hooks so that if you, um, two hooks per pattern. So if you have the opportunity and you do have extra material, you can tie it again. Um, but that's why we say one to two times, just because it, it really depends on how you tie and how much you, uh, how much material you use. So these are the kits, guys. This is, uh, we do sell these on our website and uh, this just makes your life a lot easier. I can promise you the value that you have in here is far beyond what we've charged for it um, because we just want this in your hands to make your life a lot easier and I tie right from this kit. So what I tie from is what you're going to tie from if you have in your hands. Uh, makes things pretty pretty flawless. So that's yeah. that's Thursday Night Live um, in a nutshell. Um, there's a lot more to it, a lot of extra things that we, we do. We dive into conversation. Um, there's no stupid question. You want to know something to do with fly fishing or life it doesn't matter we're gonna sit here and talk about it um, we do have a couple of things in the show that we go through so each night you saw like we, we started off with our intro we always have a good time with that we do have um, giveaways we do um, bingo every kind of at the halftime show between the flies um, bingo's we, free you get it you download a, yep. a bingo card just grab a card and you can fly fishing bowriver.com slash Thursday Night Live Yep. And it's free. And we give away tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of stuff. Yeah. Thanks to our tons sponsors of and friends of the show. Yeah. Um, yeah, which is pretty awesome. Um, we'll get to those sponsors here soon. You'll be able to see them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just, just if this is your first time in here, please let us know that this is your first time in here. We love to know that we have new people in. And if it isn't, just keep commenting and letting us know you're here. We know there's a lot of people that kind of sit there and in the background and yeah, they don't comment much, but it's so much fun for us if we know you're in here. We, yeah. we don't always get to every comment, but we can see the names come up and go through and we know you're here and, and that's special for us. Yeah. So, and then what we'll kind of just briefly talk to you guys here before we kind of get into tie and supplies is uh if you do not buy a kit that is totally fine you are more than welcome to come and hang out with us but i want you guys to use the website as a resource so yeah. we've talked about the website flyfishingbowriver.com slash tnls4 and that's what's going to show up here is what you guys are looking at so you're going to have each of the episodes here on your on your uh computer or wherever you're looking at it it's going to give you your patterns that we went over. So this was episode one about a month ago. If you click on this screen here, it's going to take you to a YouTube page, which is basically a replay of this live stream. Mm -hmm. Easy enough. You can watch the live stream. If you're just here and having beer and commenting and here for the, the fun time of it all, that's fine too, because what we've also done with each and every episode and super cool for you guys is you just go click on the image of the fly, so what, whichever one you want that we've tied. So let's say the uh, soft hackle pheasant tail. Well, this is a, um, a quick tie. And as I scrub through, you're just gonna see that, that Tim just ties the fly uh, just as is, kind of no like glam and glitter or show aspect to it. <coughs> so all of those flies are tied right out of the kit. So if you do get a kit, and you missed a few episodes, hey, go back in and retie all of these flies. Yeah. You can buy a kit at the end of the season if you want, and you could still go back and tie all these flies and have some fun doing so. And then, so this, this resource here with the website, it gives you all the materials, okay? And that stuff's updated in advance, so you guys make sure you have the materials that you need to join in with us. If, if you didn't get a kit, then that's fine, and then you'll be able to hang out with us here and tie along with us. Yep. So this is your resource. It's all in here. Uh, funny thing, this one pops up because we do themed nights and next week is what we call 70s nights and people win prizes for best dress costume. Mm -hmm. um, we did a Yellowstone night a few weeks ago yep. and that was pretty fun too. Was so fun. Yeah, the website's great. It's a super awesome way to... Um, it's a resource for you guys and, yeah. and use that as you need. But uh, yeah, that's kind of where that's at. Back to yeah. you guys in your comments. Um, what we do want to do tonight is we want to welcome a very special partner yeah. to the show. So without much further ado, let me introduce you to a new friend, a new member of the TNL fam.
There you have All it. All right. Well, welcome <laughs> to the fam, Fly Fusion. Fly Fusion. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we've we've got them here helping out, uh, make this show possible. Some of you guys have already mentioned that you've you got their email tonight promoting TNL. Um, so again, that's just super cool to have them mm-hmm. a part of us. And what is Fly Fusion? If you guys are new to hearing about Fly Fusion, which is probably very rare. Very rare. It's a magazine company, <laughs> and it's fly fishing exclusive. And so this, we're giving this away tonight. This is part of the bingo, but um, this is their magazine, and it's it's not just your your fishing magazine. It's a very high end. The f- the, the photography and the writing in there. Um, I'm not sure how I'm gonna show that. Basically, the video we just showed you. Yeah, showed, pretty much exactly what you, it looks like. <laughs> yeah, showed you all that, but. Yeah, so you could get a subscription. I believe it's quarterly. They put out their mm-hmm. magazine, and um, they do lots of giveaways, and they'll be a part of a lot of giveaways for us and you guys. They were a part of some stuff last year yeah. uh, for giveaways, but yeah, they they the high end photography um, will say kind of like it's an uh, um, fan. I don't like the word fancy, but it's kind of that like <laughs> it's bo- an ele- it's boutique. Elegant. Bougie. <laughs> bougie kind of uh, magazine. And yeah. lots of, they do fly tying stuff in there. Yeah. So I know that they'll go over a couple patterns and give you the recipe. Yep. And uh, what's, of, what's cool is the TNL fam, you can see here like Watermaster. Yeah, already part of it. They're already part of it. So yeah. it's a beautiful marriage. We're super excited to have them on board. Yeah, super great to have them on board. What Fly Fusion is also is... Uh, Tell everybody what thread to put in so that we can get tie-in right away. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> okay, guys, so for our threads for this first fly, we're going to go through the Royal Wolf to start. So I'm using a UTC. Um, this is going to be a 70 in brown. And then I'm also, you also do need some red thread. So if you don't have a red thread, that's okay. We have something in the kit that can solve that problem. But the traditional way of tying it is with red thread. So have another bobbin with whatever size doesn't matter, just some red thread. Yeah. Yeah. So Jim is not here. I don't see him. Uh, but anyways, all what I was going to say before that is you guys suck the thread through your bobbins <laughs> is that uh, Fly Fusion is also uh, International Fly Fishing Film Festival, which is mm-hmm. IF4, which um, we're... The dog farted again. Did he? Yeah. Harper. So what we're going to do there is let you guys know where they're playing. So it's a Fly Fishing Film Festival. Uh, we've had the privilege and honor of being a part of that with our show uh, Nine Foot Rod. We, we will show it this year on here. And then uh, there's the dog, the farty dog. There's the smelly pup. Ugh. So, yeah, anyways, um, it's a great day to be a Canadian. I don't know if everybody has kind of seen the things that are happening around the Canadia. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're not getting into any kind of politics and stuff, but what we are going to get into is a little bit of... See if this works. <laughs> a little bit of Canadian pride. pride. Yeah. So we're super proud to be from Canada and yeah. super proud of all the things that are happening up here in Canada. I feel like whatever side of the fence you're on, the Canadians are uniting and I feel like we're taking our flag back and uh, mm-hmm. power to the people of Canada. Uh, a lot of Americans have reached out to me and saying, what's happening? Well, I don't know. <laughs> it's a little bit of a revolution. And what it is, is is what I think is the coolest part about what's kind of taken place is that um, Canadians feel pride again in, in Canada and who we are. So um, we're here for it. We are proud to be Canadian. We are a Canadian-based show. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there it is, folks. We just wanted to shout a little bit of Canadian pride here tonight Mm -hmm. and then we love you too America we love you too and uh, it's about how that rolls so what we need Mm -hmm. to know is there's a special birthday there's a special birthday today I think there's oh no (laughs) I can't do it again (laughs) (laughs) so there is though very special um, birthday today what I'm gonna get someone to do is just uh, feel free to call into the show Oh, someone. And uh, someone I think this one's super special. <laughs> so what we'll do is we'll say thanks to our sponsors, and then we're going to wait and hear from a certain special someone 
Because perhaps there's a birthday today. time we spend in front of our vices. Don't you think you deserve a pair of scissors that can make the cut? Oh, So just hold tight. Let us see what we have here. <laughs> and it's also Hannah's birthday. Yeah. Claude's daughter. She is turning the wonderful two two. Oof. Two two two. Feels like a two, long two. time ago. Two two. So we can play the I birthday song. Birthday. And then birthday? let's see if we can do this. Assign this person to here. Oh my oh goodness! Man, who is Holy, that? look at this! <laughs> I think What's we up, have buddy? a special birthday <laughs> for Mr. Landon. Hey, happy birthday, Landon! Everybody, <laughs> Landon is one of TNL's biggest supporters, yeah. and he was super pumped today that TNL was going to be on his birthday. Yeah, what a special thing! Hey, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> you got anything to say to the hey, TNL Anna. fam? <laughs> you want to say something to everybody, Landon? So my favorite fly is the woolly bugger? Yeah, woolly bugger. Why is it your favorite fly? And what I loved about Bigger was my grandpa winning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> He gets lucky sometimes, too. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got a boy over there, which is Harvey. You got Harvey the Hound over there? So, <laughs> my, yeah, my dad just, like, like showed us the video how his tongue got pulled out. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> how old are you today, Landon? Nine. Nine. Wow. How long have you been tying for? Are you are like you better? Time, that's are you better than Grandpa like, Barry? <laughs> yeah, I just try to tie. <laughs> <laughs> Good. All right, Landon. Well, thanks for joining us here tonight on Thursday Night Live, and we hope that you have a super special birthday. Yes. We're gonna get back to tying, so you better jump back to your vice and get your royal wolf. Yeah, royal wolf. Ready and get that in the vice, cause. Uh, I know that you, I know that you're excited to tie the Muda Puda tonight, right? Yeah. Probably yeah. cuz it's super funny name to say. <laughs> say say it for me, Muda Puda. Muda Puda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, buddy, will All you right. get back to your vice? Happy, Happy birthday. Happy birthday, buddy. Have a great and, day. And uh we'll see you soon. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's All awesome. Right, that's so cool. Super special. That is me. <laughs> this is this is you. Uh, yeah. Okay, folks. So we're gonna get in here and yeah, let's let's we're tie gonna fly. Swing our microphones around. Well, let's do it. And uh, get on to this one. Get on to this one instead. Yeah. All right. All right. All right, folks. So we are gonna tie. Outside, I've been having a cranker for music. This. Yeah, he has actually been doing really good today. Yeah. So thanks, Tim. Keep it up. Keep it up. This, uh, oh, I'm going to oh. keep being good. You guys grab your flies, get your kits ready, and uh, let's tie let's along tie, with Mr. Flies. Timothy Hepworth. So this is what we're going for here, guys. Um, you're going to have an example of that in your kit if you do. Let's take a look at it. It can be helpful at times as well. Um, <coughs> yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to tie this royal wolf, okay? Um, as always, when you're opening your kits, just be careful because there are smallish hooks in here and you do not want to lose any of your materials as uh, we're going to need them all to get through this fly 
Um, so this fly, what what is the royal wolf? What is it meant to represent? Um, what instances would we fish it in? Well, this is a dry fly. This is a high riding dry fly, which is nice. It's good for quite turbulent water. Um, it, it's really a searching pattern, so it, it's nothing. It's not representing anything specific, um, but it's kind of generally representing a lot of things. Uh, it could be anything from um, mayflies to um, an ant. Um, you can tell when you look at this guy that it's got that red section in the middle of his body, so it kind of looks like a, an ant that's broken up. We do tie the wing in it to try to represent a, um, a mayfly. Um, and that's probably as close to what it's trying to replicate is a mayfly. Uh, but it's great because you can tie them quite big as well, get them up to like a size, even a size 10 or 8. Um, really big, they ride really high, they just look super buggy. And uh, actually from a tying perspective, we get to work on some things we haven't worked on since probably mid-season last year, um, which is good as well. So go ahead, get your hook um, firmly fixed in your vise. This is a size 12 dry fly hook that we're going to be working with here today. Um, I'm going to start off by using some brown colored UTC and 70. Normally using a 70 or a 6 aught for your dry fly could go down um, as well to an 8 aught. We're going to start that thread about an eye length behind the eye. Get that nice and secured. We'll go ahead and cut that tag out. Yeah, I'm just going to get this a little straighter. Question today. about the shirt that we're wearing. Oh, yeah. We don't know where to get them to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you know? Do you know? I don't know. Get them somewhere. <laughs> that's the. Uh, and that's the that's, answer. That's, that's our answer for life. <laughs> for now, <laughs> that's your answer. <laughs> you just get them somewhere. You just I don't get know. Them. Just, we'll get them. A stork, we'll stork just came by and dropped them off. I don't have no clue. Okay, so guys, the first thing we're gonna work with here is a very interesting material. This guy here. This is um, calf body hair. So some unique things about it is it makes a great wing. It really stands up, it's quite straight, keeps its profile. Downsides of this guy is that it's very slippery, a little bit difficult to tie in, um, and at times it's a little unruly. Um, but when if you can get it in and get it locked in the way you should, it's it looks really good. Okay, so we're gonna go in there and grab um, more than you think you need, because we're always gonna lose some when we clean it out, and you're always gonna lose some when you stack it. Um, so take a fairly good chunk, okay? We need we need quite a bit of wing material. We If you look at the example you have in your kit, you can see how bushy that wing is, and we need enough wing to split it in half and to, and to work with. So cut off a real good chunk of it. So I'm gonna go ahead, cut it off the patch here, and then I'm gonna get it into my hair stacker, okay? Do your best not to lose any of it as it goes in. So I'll put that in my hair stacker. Tips first, as always. If we're stacking, it's because we want those tips to be aligned. The deer stacker. The deer stacker. Give it a few taps. And we're actually going to pull it out kind of opposite of what we normally do. We want the bottom of the, or the base of our um, hair stacker to be at the front of the fly because we want the wing as we tie it in to be pointed forward. Good substitute for calf is cow. It's just a little older. It's a little older, yeah. <laughs> You could use moose, yeah, ish, deer ish. Deer ish. Really, the reason we're using this is because it's so stiff. Um, yeah. So, the best thing is to use calf body hair or um, a calf tail, is another one that is commonly used for wings or for posts. So, now that I got that all lined up, I'm going to reach in here and grab it. I'm going to get out all that under fur. You can use a comb to get it out, or you can just use your fingers like that like so. Um, and now I'm gonna switch it back to the other side of my hands because I'm gonna go into tie-in mode here. And I want that wing to be in overall length. I want it to be the same overall length as the hook itself, okay? But I'm gonna take this, this measurement and I'm gonna apply it right here. I'm not gonna apply it to the front of the hook. I'm gonna apply it to where that, that tie-in spot is, which is about that third of the way back down the hook shank, okay? So I've measured, I've got my full length of the hook. I'm going to transfer that forward to that spot, keeping a good pinch with these fingers so that it doesn't go anywhere. For me, I'm left-handed, so I'm going to do a clockwise spin on my bobbit because that's going to cause my thread to jump forward onto that hair. If you're right-handed, just do a counterclockwise spin. It'll do the same. Take a few threads or through wraps of thread, really trying to maintain it up on top because we don't want it to move around to the bottom. Okay. So once I've got a few wraps and I'm feeling pretty secure about it, I'm going to make sure that it is truly up on top of the hook shank. can get any of that little stuff that's in there out. Just by a little flick. 
Okay, now I'm gonna take a few wraps back down just to really secure that, but not too far before I come back up. When I get to right about here, I'm gonna take and pull all of that wing up, okay? Now get my thread in front of it, and now we're gonna build what's called a thread dam, okay? So I'm gonna put a ton of thread wraps right up underneath the edge of that hair. So I'll pull my fingers back a bit so you can see a little better. And this is meant to help that stand up nice and high. I'll take some thraps, kind of just creating that taper down to your eye. Come back up, push some more into it. You should see that at least it's gonna stand up a little bit. So we're gonna leave it there for a second. I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna trim at an angle the butts off, okay? The reason I trim them at an angle is because it's going to make a really nice taper as I move forward now. So I'm going to bring my thread and I'm going to start winding down. And you can see it makes that nice almost ramp down to where I'm going to tie in the tail. Okay. The oh. uh, Just the questions about synthetic. Mm -hmm. <coughs> like if you can't find like I believe Antron is yeah. often used Antron, uh, for spinner wings. Uh, yep. shucks on a merger patterns. Yep. Uh, goat hair is a great substitute that Christian mm -hmm. mentioned here. Yep. There's lots of uh, lots of hair options. The the big thing you want to remember when you're using a wing material. Glenn, on a fly. Glenn Pipke got here late. <laughs> What's with the numbers? Well, we had a big giveaway at the start of the show, and the person <laughs> who guessed the number one. So I mean, if you show up late, hey. Not winning. Hey. So <laughs> it is. <laughs> Carry yeah. on. Um. Anyways, guys. Sorry. The. Whew. Um, oh. <laughs> Harper, geez, I'm what you got? What you got to say is I've taken care of you. <laughs> I got good music. I found a way to open the window in here so yeah. that it's not hot. Mm -hmm. And then you brought a fart box. Like I, I brought a fart I'm box. I'm not sure like what side of this friendship is. I don't know. It's feeling one I side. See I see what it is. <laughs> I quit. Okay. What I was trying to say, guys, is when we're picking materials for our wings, we want them to shed water. Okay. So it can't be something that's going to hold water. So things like Xelon, Antron for synthetics are really good because they shed water. Um, they're hydrophobic as we call them. The same thing with this calf body hair, same thing with uh, a calf tail. They're, they're hydrophobic. So they don't like water and they easily shed it and they also will repel it. Okay. So now I'm going to go back to work on this wing. We're going to get this wing perfectly set before we move on. Okay, so I'm going to take some more thread wraps. We're, we're, this is just a process of getting that um, standing quite vertical. I'm, I'm okay with where it is for the moment, and I'll show you why. Because I'm going to come in here. I'll show you from this angle just so you can kind of see. But I'm going to split that wing right in half like that. I'm going to separate it so it's in two pieces. And I'm going to start driving some thread wraps between them. So it's very much like putting in dumbbell eyes on, on a streamer or something. Okay, so I'm going to come underneath. Split them in half. And now don't worry about what the wing, how it responds, because it's going to look funny at first. It's not going to look even. It's going to probably sit down on you kind of funny. But that's okay, because we're going to we're gonna fix all that. But we need to get these separated and start working on um, setting this wing. And this is the most time-consuming portion of this pattern, is getting these wings set. Once they're set, we're kind of laughing. The rest of the pattern is quite simple. We do want them to stand quite high. So once I've got them separated, I'm going to do um, a few what we're going to call figure eights. Okay, so figure eights around. Epic music. I'm love. I'm over here dancing. You are. You got some good music tonight. All night so far, you've been good. I've been great. Been great. And don't don't be afraid to get your fingers in there and kind of grab them as you go around the post because that just helps with the stability of them. Maybe just turn your vice towards, like, road. Yeah, so we can, there we go. We just kind of see. You're asking a lot of me to be able to do well, this upside down. Even if you just turn to show what it's doing. Yeah, so you can see how it's basically, it's splitting. Try to get all these ones that are in the way out. It's splitting them, so we want them to be split about like that. But I still want to drive some more thread wraps in so that they sit um, by themselves higher up. So I'm going to pull them back. I'm going to bring my thread back again. And I'm going to drive some more thread wraps right up against the wing. So it'll hopefully stand up a little better even still, like so. Um, and then it's also important to gather the wing itself together. So what I mean by that is I'll take it and I'll actually go just around the single post as if I'm creating a post, okay? And it grabs um, any of those little pieces that are out it's on the kind of looks like an 80s hairdo. What does? Well, like, the, they the would fly. do this for like uh, pigtails. Or oh yeah, totally. Zach King's in the house. Are we headed south? We, we hope. We hope so, buddy. We hope that the Freedom Rally frees us. 
And there you go, guys. I'm really happy with how those wings turned out. They do look big, and often our hesitation um, in this fly is that, oh, I got, I know for myself, I say this from experience and tying lots of patterns with this wing, is that I make it too short because I think it's standing out too much. But then remember what a mayfly looks like. A mayfly's wings come together like a sailboat. They're nice and proud. They're tall, way above the rest of their body. Okay, so when we tie in the legs, our hackle can look smaller because the hackle is actually just representing legs. We want that wing to stand proud, okay? So really important that we get that nice, full hook length worth up in the air um, and it really stands alone as the wings. So what I'm gonna do here while I'm here, and this is just my, what I like to do on these, is um, I'm gonna go actually try to trim out a little bit of this mess that's in here because there's gonna be some of that sometimes. Um, and then I'm gonna set the wings so they can't move on me. And I'm gonna do that with some UV resin. And if you know me, you know my favorite UV resin is uh, that Solar Res and specifically Bone Dry. Really like this stuff. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here between the wings and I'm gonna put just a drop of this. Let it soak into those thread wraps. And also what that's gonna do is it's gonna set it. I didn't do much to it at all. Just enough to kind of color, color the thread. I'm gonna let that sink in for just a moment, then I'm gonna cure it. Come in here and cure that. And with doing that, now when I go to wrap my hackle in and around there, that isn't gonna move. That's not gonna go anywhere on me. Um, that's kind of one of the frustrating parts of tying these patterns is you get in there to do that, and then all of a sudden you, you hit it with your hackle or something and it wants to tip over or rotate around the hook. But if you do this, it's not gonna go anywhere. That's just a little um, Tim trick. Tim trick of the day. Boom, boom, boom. boom so boom, guys, boom. if you've got to this point, obviously your, your work has been saved. Mm -hmm. I want to know on a scale of one to five, how good is Tim's audio? Oh yeah. Good question. Cause that is Mr. Blake Teague spoiled us with what is a called a countryman mic, which is on Tim's face. You can barely see it, but I want to know on a scale of one to five, five being really good. One being season two. <laughs> <laughs> well played. Well yeah. played. If so, you don't know what he's talking about, go back, go, watch go back and watch season two because <sighs> it is intense. Uh, but a question here is about the Royal Wolf versus the Royal Coachman. Coachman. Yeah. It's a great question. And oftentimes I see both of them and I don't really understand what the difference is, but I think it is the tail mm -hmm. is a different uh, hair. Yep. And then the wings are more of like, uh, they're just like the Royal Wolf is probably more like, uh, f like a caddis imitation. And I would say the Royal Coachman might be the Mayfly more. More Mayfly than the yeah. Ish. I yeah. think they're both a pretty good they're searching, searching pattern. pattern. Um, Often the coachman, <clears throat> you use a different wing material and a different tail material. Normally it's um, golden pheasant that's been dyed orange. Yeah, so you have that, that very specific orange bar, to yeah. black barring. Um, it's just supposed to look a little fancier, I think. But great question. They, they're actually a very similar pattern. So, um, Well, Blake says people yep. don't know anything. But it's ten. We're getting above. We're getting above fives, well, that's Blake. Great. That's that's pretty epic. A countryman. If just Google what a countryman mic is, it's absolutely like we. That's great. We it's good to hear. Yeah. I mean, we like to you, solve problems you, on the show, and you can't get better. <laughs> and no. Thanks to Blake Teague and. Uh, What's up, Sammy Superstar? Sammy is in the house. Sammy is my tech guru. <laughs> so Sammy, answer yeah, the question: How is question. Tim's? audio based on the fact that you might not have seen a lot of streamers with a countryman. Yeah. Turn your face, Tim. It's a good question. It's a very sleek design. You can hardly see it. <coughs> Hides in against my nice skin tone. Yes, and yeah, I, <coughs> I mean, I'm, I can only speak from what I can hear, but it sounds really good to me in comparison to what we've had over the last, even this season, how our audio kind of started wasn't the best. Um, but yeah, Sammy, curious oh. to see what you think. Constantly so, improving. Yeah. It's not dyed orange. That's a natural oh, I color. Oh, I mean, yeah. From the neck, yeah. Yes. 4.20. Well, John, he, <laughs> might, he might be saying 420. <laughs> yeah. All right. Anyways. All right. Let's get back, back to Back to the point. I thought um, it was a good place for everybody to go take a pee, grab a beer. Yeah, yeah. It's good. Okay, guys. The next thing we're going to do here is we're going to grab onto our tail material, which we're using some deer hair tonight, because that's what we provided in your kit. Okay. It looks like this. 
So again, we're gonna take a decent clump of this. We're gonna we're gonna probably split what you have in there in half. We're gonna lose some of it when we stack it and when we clean it out. Um, we're gonna take this and we are gonna put it into our hair stacker and stack it up real good. So go ahead and trim that off that patch and get it into your hair stacker. Clean out some of that stuff. I like to do a little bit of pre-cleaning before I ever put it in there. Just get out some of that under under fur. Pick it out. Let's go ahead and stack this. You don't need a ridiculous tail on this. You could probably have um, a more prominent tail than you would normally have on a mayfly pattern, but it doesn't have to be crazy outstanding. Um, I'm gonna flip this this time so the base of my hair stacker is actually pointed towards the back of the fly because that's where I want my tips to go. And as you can see right there, the tips lined up quite nicely. I'm gonna go ahead and grab them. I'm gonna switch hands real quick and clean out that little bit of fluff that was in there. Now, as far as a measurement is concerned, we're gonna do um, a tail that is the exact same length as our wing. So we want it to be a full hook shank length. So from the eye to the bend is where our measurement's gonna be. So I'm gonna measure off there. So I'm gonna take that full amount. I have a little bit more than I like there. It's a little bit prominent. I'm gonna take just a little bit out. And that's just a personal preference, guys. You're gonna kinda know after you tie it a few times what you like, what you don't. I don't want a crazy huge tail, but I do want a good one, good prominent one. So I'm gonna re-measure that, okay, I like where that is. So I'm gonna take my thread back, so it's right, the hook bend, and I'm gonna tie this in, switch my hands, keep my mark by just pinching with my other fingers. That tells me that's where my tying point is. I'm gonna do again my clockwise spin for myself to gather my thread. I want this to stay right up on top. Take a couple of good thread wraps, and then I'm gonna come back down the fly. Get a good look at it, because you don't wanna go too far down, because you wanna keep it from going down around the bend of the hook. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna trim out those butts. Again, at a bit of an angle. And that should create a fairly nice underbody to the fly. I'm gonna take my thread wraps up now. You can see I pretty well maintain that taper. Looks pretty good and even, which is what I want, that nice even underbody. Don't worry about any little things you've got on that body because we're gonna cover it all up with some peacock curl. And I'm really happy with that tail. Again, prominent tail. We wanted to sit back at a decent length behind um, the hook itself. Um, and yeah, we're gonna put in our next material. We've only got a couple more materials to go before we're gonna wrap up this fly. The hard part was that wing. Now we got that done, we're, we're pretty much laughing. So in your kit, you've got some peacock hurl. So I want you to go ahead and grab three pieces of hurl, okay? And we're gonna take um, three pieces. I'm gonna go up to the tips. I'm gonna break off the tips because the tips are always most brittle. So take about an inch off the top and then we're gonna tie those in right where we left our thread back at the tail. And now the next step we're gonna do here, start by advancing our thread right up to kind of behind that wing. I'm gonna do a half hitch here just to save my work. Okay, I'm gonna set my bobbin out of the way for a minute. Now I like to grab what we call uh, uh, hackle pliers, but in the plunger style, they're just the ones I like. You push you push that button on the back like there, push it and it opens up and closes, opens up and closes. We call it a plunger, um, plunger style hackle plier. And I'm gonna grab all three pieces of hurl like that. And now I'm actually gonna twist my hurl, but be careful how much you twist because if you twist too much, you'll break it. Okay, so I'm just gonna twist it a little bit. I'm going to start wrapping it forward. Nice touching wraps in the palmer as I go forward. We want this to be a nice um, bushy body. I'm going to keep twisting and wrapping a little bit as I move so that I've always got some twisted pieces that are going on next. This will strengthen as well some of that peacock curl because peacock curl, as we know, has a tendency of being a little bit um, fragile and flimsy at times. The cool to thing you can do with your Norvice is you can spin dub the peacock curl. It'd be tough with yeah. the the wing on there. Without the can... wing, you totally could, yeah. So. so once I've got that locked in place, I know it's not going anywhere. I trim that out, okay? Leaving a little bit of space behind um, here because I do need to put my hackle in and that's where, uh, where I want it to be, okay? So <clears throat> that being said, we gotta deal with our hackle now. Um, and the hackle can be, at times, can be a little fun to play with. But when you're picking a hackle for you guys in your kit, you can't pick one, obviously, because we've already got it in there. But you're gonna, you either have a hackle plier, or sorry, a hackle um, gauge, or you have, you can just take this on the hook and you can measure it off of how far it sits down. So 
does it sit all the way to the tip of the to the tip of that hook if I bend it out over the shaft and yeah it does so I know this is a pretty close it's gonna be a really good um, size feather for this specific pattern so what I'm preparing is I'm gonna strip all that fluff off the bottom of this specific um, <laughs> of this specific <laughs> oh man my dog is now sitting on Dana's lap you be careful because you know what's coming out that end yeah and then I'm gonna take and strip a little bit of extra, just a little bit more on top, because that's where my initial wrap is gonna go in that direction. So I'm gonna pull it, it off. It just that came direction. out. Did it come out? Oh, I can smell it. That was your own fault. You picked him up. Next year we're gonna put a uh, stink bomb in everyone's kit, <laughs> and we're gonna bring Harper and Harper's say, farts. "Now break the break the stink bomb now, so they can enjoy what we're enjoying." Oh yes, it's really good. Oh. So I'm gonna tie this in just behind. I'm actually gonna lay the stem of it right between the two wings, like so. I'm gonna secure that down. Take some good wraps, kind of right there. I'm gonna actually cross my thread between the wings again, secure that stem in front as well, and then I'm gonna trim it out, like so. I'm gonna throw a half hitch in up here by the hook eye so that I also save that work. I'm gonna get it out of the way. And now you can grab this with hackle pliers if you need to. I, I like to keep it in my hand. That's just a preference for me. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by wrapping this forward. We're going to do probably, it depends if how much a hackle you have to work with. But you want to do probably two or three behind, two or three in front. Now that I've ran out of hackle here, I'm going to throw it on my pliers so I don't lose it. Okay. And we're going to wrap it forward, doing a few wraps up here by the eye and once I've got that in and I'm happy with it I feel like I've got a good amount on there which looks good you want it to look nice and bushy I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna secure that off and take some thread wraps behind some thread wraps in front really make sure that that hackle isn't gonna come off when I snip my thread now what I like to do before I ever even cut this off is I go back to my half hitch tool um, especially these dry flies just a little tool anything with a hole in the end I'm gonna wrap around that twice. Well, not anything with a hole in the end. No, not anything. That's true. Because you'd be trying to put me up there. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. I'm gonna do it twice. And the, the, what I like about that, if you notice, is when I did that, and I pushed in there and I let that slide off the end, it actually take, because often you have hackle fibers that point forward, it takes them and in that knot, it secures them and pushes them back into place. So it finishes in a really nice spot. So I like the way that's sitting. I'm gonna get rid of that thread for now. Okay, so I'm gonna set that aside. I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna trim out that feather. And now you're probably thinking, well, Tim, that's not done. There's no red on there. Tim, that's not red. done. I know, There's right? no red jeez, on there. Jeez, jeez, jeez. Have some patience. I was gonna say, hey, if you haven't got your bingo card, head over to www.livefishingboarder.com slash backslash. Thursday night live. Get your bingo card because we're playing bingo, bingo shortly. Bingo's coming up shortly. Okay, guys. So from here, last step of the puzzle, last step of the puzzle, piece of the puzzle is your red thread. That's why I told you to go get some red thread. We did provide you with some of this floss that's in there. So if you want, if you didn't have silk thread, floss this silk, works great too. You can just tie that in and do the exact same thing I'm about to do. Um, but I'm going to do it with thread because that's the way that the pattern's tied normally. We just wanted to give you another option in case you didn't have oh, any red thread. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to come in here right in the middle. I'm going to act just as if I'm putting thread on a hook for the first time, like I did when I started the fly. And I'm going to start putting some wraps down. I'm going to trim out that tag. And from here, I'm just going to lay some wraps down. Okay, so I want to leave kind of an even amount of peacock hurl on either side. Speaking of wraps. Rocks. I better get my wraps going. Yeah, get your wraps. Use the command. Yeah, get on that. So you can see all I've done there, guys. I've left peacock curl in the back, peacock curl in the front. And I've got that nice red center. From here, all I'm going to do is whip finish this fly, and we're going to call her a wrap. A wrap. Same card as last week. It's going to whip finish. Two, three. I'm going to put a touch of head cement on here. Get that one out of the way. gonna put just a small touch just to make sure that those thread wraps don't come off and there you go guys there is your royal wolf 
Great pattern. Definitely have it in a few different sizes in your box. Just like that. Nice prominent wing. Trust me, keep a few of these in your box in different sizes. It's always a great, I find like you get really caught up in throwing very specific patterns and then sometimes you just go back to some of the classics and it's what happens for you and it makes it work. So uh, Alex said his, his hackle was really short mm -hmm. um, and it actually made for a cool style where it will ride lower, maybe like an emerger style. So like we had chatted kind of before the show is um, maybe the inconsistency in the, in the hackle placement um, and I and I like this idea here because are you done so I can uh, hop yeah I'm good screen. hop out the idea there is that like I'm trying to think of the theory but like like how how much is that gonna sit above the water column like how much is a bigger hackle gonna make it protrude mm -hmm. versus an emerger that actually comes into the meniscus yeah. Alex it's a great thought and that is a really cool uh, topic of conversation and I yeah. got my brain going. yeah no it, it's and it's it's interesting we talk about it a lot we'll we'll tie certain flies with different size hackle or whatever because we do want them to sit differently in the water and if you take for instance if you take like an Adams dry fly versus a parachute Adams what's the difference well the difference is an Adams dry fly has a hackle style like this whereas a parachute just has the hackle flip the oh, other way basically. and so the, the rest of the fly sits under the surface and now you have an emerger versus a dry fly adult so it's it's a great topic for conversation and it's uh yeah time in both ways cool thing about fly tying is that although there's a tried tested and true classic pattern like this um what what's right or wrong about it i mean Tie, tie the red and purple or yellow or green and give it a try because I think too often people get so there's two ways that this goes there's this extreme and there's this extreme the people who never uh, you ready to switch I'm ready bring me in the people who don't wane from the original and they just rock and roll it and then there's people on the other side where I've seen people post photos and in my head it's like okay why'd you put a <laughs> bead head on this like yeah. it's yeah um but yeah I mean honestly that's that's fly fishing in a nutshell is that yeah. it's not in a nutshell no I think of for myself personally fly tying well fly tying is fluid right it's not a it's not something that's yeah. set in stone at least it's not for me and I think that's that's maybe I'm not I don't want to offend anybody, but I think that's a little bit more of an old school mindset where it's like you had these set patterns, you never totally. variated from them, and, and I think you did. You why would you use red thread that's tied with silk? Yeah, Cla exactly like, right. I, great. Um, yes, and you're true, and you're right, and there's all those things, but um, I think once we kind of break the mold in the fly tying world, it's like what we want you guys to understand is like what is the hackle doing? Like Alex said, it's maybe putting the high, the fly higher up on the water. Mm -hmm. Very, very good point. So understand uh, what your materials are doing and why you're putting them into the fly. And like Adrian earlier, great question. What's a substitute? Can you use uh, synthetic material? Why do I put the wig on all the time? I don't know. You always get so hot in it. Not today, <laughs> Timmy. Not today. Because I got the window open and it's nice and chill in here. It is nice and chill in here. Um, yeah, so what are substitutes? I don't know. As he asked the question, I'm Googling it literally in front of me because it's going to make me a better fly tire. And if I can have the time to Google it or people can answer questions. Um, but just what, what's what we do here at Thursday Night Live is mm -hmm. we don't know near anything or everything. And through the TNL fam, we all just get a little better at tying flies and cool stuff like that and yeah. winning prizes. Speaking of prizes. Uh, like Doug said, he modifies. So when we say Doug, it's Elaine Lee, but <laughs> some people are this use their wife's Instagram, Facebook. <laughs> uh. Oh, what I also want to tell you guys, if you're not subscribed, because we're going to play bingo right away. What I want to say is if you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, go there. If you want stickers and you are on the what we call the replay squad, 
type in a comment and say, hey, I'm on the replay squad and I'm watching for the very first time or the 500th time. If you watch the quick ties, comment. Let us know that you're watching those because uh, it, it's a lot of work to do those and we just want to know that you guys are watching them. So throw a comment on YouTube videos, on, on the quick ties, on the live streams. So let mm -hmm. us know. You will be called the replay the replay squad. squad. Uh, I like that. Good name. Good name choice. Yeah. So what we're gonna do quickly is my favorite knot in the entire planet, mm. and I think I'm just gonna start to call it the Dana non-slip loop knot. <laughs> if if <laughs> you if, if watch this quick video, and you know what, get out some something to tie this knot and tie it along with me as I walk you through this. But it is my favorite. Not I tie this literally on everything, and we can discuss it after. Um, streamers, dry flies, nymphs, there's really nothing I don't tie it on. But the way that I learned to tie this fly is different than anything I've ever been shown by anyone else. Because when I show people, they're like, what? So I don't know where I learned it. I didn't invent it. I did learn it somewhere. But I'm going to show you how to tie it. It's a non-slip loop knot. So get out something. Get a hook in front of you. You just tie a fly. Get that fly right there. And try. And then we can discuss this. We come back here. Because I think this is a really cool knot. And we'll be back in like five minutes. Hey guys, Dana Lottery Fly Fishing Bow River Outfitters. Uh, what we're going to go over today is the non-slip loop knot. Okay, this is a different variation than what some of you might know. Uh, very effective for streamers. Okay, we are going to tie a little loop at the top before our knot. Uh, as, a, as opposed to the clinch knot or the improved clinch knot that seats right down to the eye of the hook. This gives a little loop there, which allows some more play. I also use it quite often for dry flies, especially when we're fishing big foam hoppers or uh, big foam stone flies or, or even big stimulators. Uh, what this allows your fly to do is have a little more freedom of movement, taking out some of the drag. Uh, we all know as, as well as we mend, we can't quite get that last little bit of drag out. and. Uh, I've even used this on size 20 midges. Um, some people's concern is there's a lot of bulk uh, because of the knot around the around the tip uh, by the fly, but to me, I think the movement that it gives your fly is far more substantial than a little bit of uh, bulk with what we call an invisible line. All right, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna tie this knot, um, just have a piece of fly line here. And we've got a giant saltwater hook. Uh, for demonstration purposes, it's a little exaggeratory. What are you gonna do uh, with, your, with your tippet, okay, is uh, pull off a piece on the end of your leader and tie an overhand knot. Sounds pretty simple. Okay, some people think that it kind of looks like a bit of a turtle. If that is the representation that you want to go with, then just remember the turtle has to be upright, okay? The turtle cannot be down like this. As we know, an upside down turtle is not a happy turtle. So we're gonna take the tag end and we're gonna feed it through the eye of the hook. All right, step one complete, simple like that. Now the variation of this one is normally people would come and tie above their overhand knot three or four times and then they would go back through the their overhand knot that they've tied in here. And if you do that then you would keep this loop a much smaller. Okay, but in, in this version we want to keep that quite a bit open. And now we take the tag end and all we're going to do is we're going to come through this big loop and we're gonna just just wrap around once and why we need this to be upright is so that we can wrap around the right side of our leader or our tippet 
One full revolution. The the big thing to remember here is, is sometimes you're gonna tie this and it's gonna you're gonna seat it and it's gonna slip right out. That's because you didn't get totally through this loop. Okay, your overhand knot. And what happens there is you think you're through, and when you go to seat it, it pops back out. Especially with uh, tippet where it's really it's hard to see. This is very visual because it's a piece of fly line but make sure that you go through fully. And then what we're gonna do, then we pull in on the leading line. Okay, that's gonna be making this much smaller. And now what you do is you have the ability to size your loop that's by the eye of the hook, okay? That to me is, is fine if I'm fishing streamers and maybe I wanna uh, get it cinched down a bit. So you just pull the tag and the leading line at different times and it will cinch the loop smaller and then when you've got it to the size that you want you pull on your leading line and that will cinch this down. Boom. Seat it. Done. Okay, now you know if you've done it right because well, two reasons. It's not going to pull right out. And the other reason is your tag hangs at a 90 degree like that. You can see now how we have freedom and we have play in this, in this hook. Especially uh, for streamers, I find this very effective. The other kind of hidden bonus to this knot is that you, that you basically get 100% line strength on your knot. So your knot isn't gonna break, it's gonna be your line that breaks because that's what's in the eye of the hook. Whereas if you are to tie a clinch knot, improved clinch knot, where it's seated right down to the eye of the hook, the knot weakens your line and you know it can give you 60-70% of breaking strength on your tippet. Uh, but we have to remember, the most important part about tying any knot is that you tie it well. Um, don't worry about the numbers, don't worry about the breaking strength, worry about making sure that your knot is, is seated down well. And like I said before, if you don't tie it right, you're gonna pull and it's just gonna, just gonna slip right out. So make sure you give it a good pull and you come in. <clears throat> we just clip off the tag. Some people get obsessively close Remembering that if you are too close and you're not fully seated and you go to tighten it or you catch a fish and, he, and it tightens, this tag could pop through and unravel. So leave a little bit of tag off the end there, um, you know, and, and then check it every once in a while. If, if you get snagged on something, you know, bring it back in and check it. Awesome. Well, that's the non-slip loop knot, my version. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please reach out to us and let us know. Great knot. All right, all right, all right. So, yeah, that is my favorite. You might have learned this. Um, like, I think a couple comments were that you've learned it another way, which is mm -hmm. exactly why I wanted to show it. Because I saw it kind of fly around uh, the socials. The but, socials. But that's that's a knot that you really want to learn, uh, and and that way it's it's really quick to tie, like mm -hmm. very quick to tie. Um, but also, like I said in there, if you don't tie a knot well, who cares what the numbers are? It won't work. Mm -hmm. So whether it's a double clinch, cinch, dinch, ginch, whatever, <laughs> like that's, everybody gets so technical about all the numbers. Well, and, some serious uh, long time guides have never used anything but a clinch and they yeah. swear by it and, and that's it's, great it's, but they tie it well they tie it in their and eyes it, closed it, in the dark. it is awesome i almost don't remember how to tie one i know because i've I tied this knot on everything do, do you catch less fish i don't know how do you, how do you actually uh qualify that statement yeah. impossible you cannot go back and fish the same spot at the same time, in the same moon phase, the, the ginch knot. Fresh well, that's, and fresh that's ginch. Called, hey, look at Jordan <laughs> Saldana, Saldana Jones. Jones. What is up, brother? It's one of our...
beloved guides, yeah. a beautiful human, a beautiful man, and uh, beautiful just Ginch. took himself <laughs> off the market. <laughs> he did. He yeah. did. Yeah, yeah, so Blake learned it. We showed it last year. Uh, fished it all last year and love it. Used it in Alaska over the summer. Yeah, it works. I've used it pike, salt. I've I've tied horrible knots, like this knot horribly uh, on pike and on big like steel leaders and it works and doesn't fall apart. Mm -hmm. So anyways, Stephen Lyle, it's what? What? The Stephen Lyle is actually here. No way. If you don't have a bingo card, folks, you're going to want to get yourself a bingo card. You're going to want to. You're really going to want to. Ooh, I thought you were setting a new like beat for us. We'll start laying down some rhymes. <laughs> you don't sing, remember? I, no, I, I can beatbox. Do you guys want to hear me beatbox? I do. Okay, well, let's play bingo first. So get out your bingo <laughs> cards. What's up, and Bob? And all the wonderful things that come along with that. Mr. Bingo, 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 bingo. Here we go. So this is the Watermaster Bingo. Watermaster, Watermaster Flying Go. And if you want, and we'll I'm row gonna... the boat. Row it. No, we can't row against me. This way. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm in the back fishing. Oh. I'm fishing out of the back. That's not fair. What is a Watermaster raft, Tim? Why yeah. don't you tell the well, folks while I try question. to get the prizes in yes. visual? I'll just <laughs> I'll just non-audio the non -audio prizes. Non-audio the prize? All right. What is a Watermaster? Well, this, is, this specific one you see here is a single-person fishing device. Um, that folds down into a backpack, you can pack it in, it's light enough to do so, inflate it, um, and be able to fish some pretty remote locations with it, or not remote, put it on the Bow River, float down the Bow River. They make a couple different sizes now. They actually have a bigger one with a frame in it that you can have a couple, two to three people on. Um, but yeah, very versatile craft. We, we have used and love them. Um, we don't often use them on the boat because we have our drift boats and we have lots of clients, but for personal use um, and for taking maybe one person along, it is pretty awesome. That is Watermaster, and we're very thankful to have them as a sponsor, and especially sponsoring the Flying Go for you guys. And as Dana goes through here, you can see we've got some pretty awesome stickers. Looks like he showed you a magazine. He showed us uh, some of our shore tying materials. The first four calls are up there, just so everyone knows. Oh, yeah. First four are up there. So we are going four corners to win, guys. I know it says that up there, but that means all four corners. We have uh, the first four calls up there, and we'll just keep adding them up. There's a hat for you as well. Like so our sponsors at uh, Rocky Mountain Fly Shop. This is an incredible part of the giveaway. Oh, I like this one. Look at that. The bench kit. What all comes in as a bench kit? Everything. Everything you need. Comes all with. that stuff I can't read because <laughs> of the camera. It's got Low lots of resins. And tack. Swax. Swax. Hard head clear. I'm trying to read it. <laughs> Anyways, it's uh, it's really this all entire all you kit need. of good stuff. Also comes in there from yeah. our friends at RockyMountainFlyShop.net, and yeah. then from our friend on the other side of the coast. Ooh, Mr. you must Blake be talking Teague. about Mr. Teague. A Check pair of this Costa out. sunglasses. Look at that beauties. Oh, it did focus. It did. Yes. You were lucky. I almost Beautiful. ran away with them. Hair. Yeah, I know. I had to stop him. <laughs> I stopped, broke his legs. Yeah, I can't walk. So you got these beautiful pair of Costa sunglasses from Mr. Blake Teague. You've got this hat from, is this from Rocky Mountain Fly uh, Shop? That's actually from Fish Pond or Friends from of Fish, Fish Pond. Yeah. And then this bench kit from Rocky Mountain Fly Shop and all these stickers and a magazine and all this material. <laughs> There's so much stuff. <laughs> I, don't even, I don't even know what to say. So but let's get back to bingo. And uh, yeah, a lot of really good stuff. So guys, this is how bingo works. It's totally free. You just got to go on our website, sign up for a bingo card. You download it and we play. We just call. It's a program. It calls the bingo and we try to do our best. There can be ties. And then what happens in a tie? What happens in a tie? We have a tiebreaker. We have a tiebreaker. It's a dog. He's petting a dog. <laughs> <laughs> just, just seeing your hand going violent there. <laughs> so all this stuff from our awesome sponsors. And we still got 15 episodes left, guys, with tons of stuff. Tons the final episode will blow your freaking mind. How much? I bet you there's over $10,000 of stuff on the final episode. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a great giveaways this year. Great one. It so let's keep going. We okay. got some calls to go here. All right. Anybody got bingo yet? Nobody yet. Nobody yet. Nobody's a bingo. 
All right, the next call is Shop Back. So we have Silent Bob, The Simple Chernobyl, The Devil Bug, Thursday Night Live Fly Time, and Shop Back. So you Shop need back. four corners. Is your dog an English pointer? No, he's actually a German short hair pointer. But yes, they yeah. do look very similar. Yes. Yeah. All right, so when you do win, when you call bingo, say bingo, and then give us your card ID number so that we can verify it in the system. If there's a tie, we just throw all the card numbers into the tiebreaker, and it tells us who's the winner. Yeah. Clink Hammer. Ooh, Clink Hammer. Hammer. We're looking for all four corners, folks. Nathaniel has three. So Ooh, that's a good that start. could be delayed, and he could be winning with Clink Hammer. So just let us know if this Clink Hammer made you a winner. There we go. I like when the Ooh. bingo sound is louder. The Royal so Wolf. So because it's louder, I can turn it up. The Royal Wolf. <coughs> the Royal Wolf. <laughs> What's so funny? Nothing. Not right, a thing. folks, we just want to give stuff away. Yeah. This is a great giveaway day. This is, this is a great giveaway day. Yep. Very, very good. And remember, oh. next week... Next week is 70s night, and we are going to Trax Pub. So it'll be on the giant big screen there. Thursdays, their pizza night. Best pizza in a long area, a large area. Um, <laughs> a large area. Bingo, 091, Ron Croto. Oh, Ron, oh Blake, Blake Teague, too. we got a couple. Oh, man, got a couple. Okay, guys, so let us know which call was your bingo. Bingo, 130, Pam Norton. We're coming in hot. We got bingo. I got five, five, five. That's an auctioneer, not a bingo caller. <laughs> Card 100. Oh, I have four in a row. We need four corners. It looks like we got three there. Okay, so in. let's start off with 091. We've got card 100 for Blake. And then for So Pat's Pat. plus. And Ron also called it on Pat's plus. Okay, so we got uh, Pam. What did you call? Because I think we'll have a three-way tie. We'll just throw them in the tiebreaker. You guys will see it all go down. Uh, Pam, which one did you call it on? Let's see. Maybe we type hers in. One thirty. Uh, Pam called it on pass plus two. So all we right. do have a tiebreaker. Tie. So all we do is we just enter the numbers. We got card one hundred. Mr. Blake Teague is going to get his sunglasses back. <laughs> Number 130. 130 and 091. All right. So all you guys right. can see all the numbers are there. And all I do is hit go, and it randomly picks a number. Let's see what happens. And Who's it going to be? The winner 100, is... 100, Mr. Blake D. 130. Oh, 130. Sorry. I can't uh -huh. see that well. <laughs> <laughs> Pam Norton. Pam, Pam Norton. is the winner of this week's awesome, Watermaster man. Flying Go. Awesome. So what does she need to do? She needs to send me an email at... TNL at flyfishingbowriver.com. Give me your details and I will get this awesome stuff sent out to you courtesy of uh, Rocky Mountain Fly Shop, Shore Fishing, Fly Fusion, Blake Teague, <laughs> Teague's Pond Shop, and uh, Fish Pond. Fish Pond. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyways, guys, that's how bingo works. Join us every Thursday, even if you don't want to do anything else other than win prizes. <laughs> I highly suggest you show up. Definitely. See Worth doing. what this does for you. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to come back to Time to Fly. Tell them, did, we already told them. Uh, we didn't tell them yet, no. Right, tell them what they need to get right. into their bobbin. We are going to use some, I would suggest, some black thread. You can go with something uh, maybe a little bit thicker as we're dealing with foam. So I'm going to use a 140, or a comparison would be a 6-aught, um, or maybe a 3-aught if you want some extra strength. Go with a dark color. We're going to need that for our dubbin. Yes, and we're going to say thanks to our sponsors, and we will be right back, folks.
Don't you think you deserve a pair of scissors that can make the cut? Aw, Watch your mouth. heart. <laughs> that was good. I actually like that song. Was we're back. We, we nailed it. That was like the Watermaster song. I was, yeah. like, I was like, man, this sounds so good. <laughs> you guys want some <laughs> ASMR back? We don't need any more. Hey, hey guys, hey, if you no really more. enjoyed the ASMR last time, no what I'm going to need you guys to do is I'm going to need you to put up your hand. If you haven't raised your audio, because we're not going to blow your ears out like last time. Huh. But what I do on <laughs> I, I do on one mustache ride. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a younger mustache right there. It's not quite filled. Oh anymore. folks, we're from Canada. We're, we're super proud to be Canadian. Yes, we are. With yes, all the are. wonderful things that are happening up here in Canada. It is a fight for freedom, and I'm super proud to fly the flag. We've put it behind us to let you guys know that we are proud to be Canadian. Um, yeah, it's kind of a united, unified, wonderful thing where I feel like uh, a lot of positive things are taking place. And not just my hair regrowth, <laughs> but I'm talking about yeah, the... Uh, the trucker movement yeah. that's happening. You know what sponsorship we need? Rogaine. Tim, my <laughs> hair is... I have more <laughs> flow than the Ono. Oh, no. oh, man. You should take your hat off. I got lots for, of flow. Well, for the, for, the, oh, yeah. for the anthem. Yes, Mr. Riley's in the house. He wants the up, Fly Fishing Bow River Outfitters Asimer <laughs> channel, where we seat knots oh. with the sound of slurping. You know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. All right. We love you, Canada. We love you, America. We love everybody that's joining us here tonight. And we're going to tie the Muda. Puda. Muda Puda. Puda. Yeah. All right, folks. You need to know if you're tying along with us and you need us to stop for a sec because, hey, you're broke a thread. Probably Cam. You just hit SOS. You say SOS, guys. We hit SOS. The screen flashes. Tim knows to stop. We stop, we come back to you. Even if you need to go for a piss or a beer break, that's what you do. You hit SOS. But I forgot something. What'd you forget? We have not shown the baking cam tonight. Oh. Gosh darn it. We better well, get well, on this it. This one's real special. So. Get on it. All oh, right, folks, on man. the baking cam, baked <sighs> by baking cam, chocolate profiteroles, rolls, profiteroles, profiteroles. That's what we do here, folks. We show you the most delicate tessen, delicatessen, delicatessen, baking things. And that's, wait, that's not live? It seems <laughs> like it's repeating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I I've hope been, you guys have smell-o-vision because I've been fooled more than once. we do. <laughs> <laughs> we have smell-o-vision, and it's clearly just oh, the dog. Man. Hey, Joel asking, uh, which is, um... Stop. He, he says, no, Joel just said stop. No, he was wondering which hook we had. Um, Joel, which hook are you speaking of? Are you speaking of the one for the Muda Puda or for the Royal Wolf? Um, let us know which one. Um, yeah. Oh, is wait, we got an nails? SOS. <laughs> Tim's new nails. <laughs> SOS, SOS. I'm, what does wait, that's... Miss Deanna Sepp need? What? <laughs> it's Miss. Miss. It's Miss. I said Miss. All right. <laughs> I'm not sure what her SOS is. Maybe she's brought us some treats. Oh, please. We please, could be please, doing please, good please, at that. Please, please, no, please. we don't. We have a cooler down here. It's uh, a good question, though. Good, great you question. You should switch mics and remove that red piece out of there. All right. All right, all right, all right, all right. Getting rid of that one. On to the countryman. There we go, guys. Let's get on to this next fly. So this one yeah. is one you've maybe never heard of. Mr. Sather said I better pay attention to that. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he better. He knows better. Bruce got four hooks in his bag. Four hooks. Good sometimes food. you get more, and sometimes you don't get enough. It is what happens. 
Okay guys, so the Muda Puda. Well, tonight seems to be the night of searching patterns and that is what we're doing. So this is a, a very unique um, pattern. It's not really representing a whole lot of anything. It's searching for a whole lot of things, but it really could be anything. It could be a beetle, it could be a mayfly, a caddis. You can tie it in so many different colors and representations. Um, be very careful when you're taking this one out of your kit because there's there's actually a ton of moving pieces in this. The moving pieces, lots of pieces in this one. Um, from foam to hair to a couple different colors of dubbing to legs. We just have a whole lot going on in this one. So just be careful um, when you're pulling it out of your kit that you don't uh, you don't mix it up. Because we don't want to lose anything. We're going to need it to need all of it to tie our fly. Okay, so the hook we're using on this one is an emerger style hook. Okay, and this is a bigger one. This is a size 12. Um, when I first get it in my vise, I'm actually going to keep it tipped down a little ways because I want to, that's a bit extreme, but I want to be able to get access quite far down into that bend. So I'm going to tip it just a little bit more. Joel, is this similar to what you're seeing? How it's kind of a uh, clink hammer-ish type yeah, really, Emerger, it yeah. is. It's just it's very similar to a clink hammer. You're using yeah. actually foam to hold it up instead of a instead of a wing. Yeah, but very very similar. It's meant to kind of cross a few ideas off the list as to what it could be. Um, we're gonna start our thread kind of a little bit back from the eye. We're gonna work it all the way down. I'm gonna leave it hanging right near the point to start with. Trim that tag out. Now in your kit you have some crystal flash, but you also have a very thin piece of flash, a tinsel piece here. Okay. So what I want you to do is the first material we're going to tie in is this. We're going to tie it in here and work it all the way back. So just take a wrap. I like that. You see how I left some extra material? I'll do it again for you. When I'm tying with stuff like this, I'll leave a big piece out so it's easier to, to grab and to get a hold of. And then what I'm going to do at the same time is once I get a grasp on it, then I can pull it back so I don't have all that excess waste up front. Instead of having to trim it off, I just pull it back, wrap it down. Now I'm going to move my thread all the way back, really deep into this bend. Because imagine all this down here is going to be hanging out underneath the water. So I'm going to keep that back there. Um, next material we're going to go after here, guys, is our hot spot. So we're using uh, some very fine orange dubbing as our hot spot. So this stuff here, okay. We're not using a very big piece of it, just a very small pinch. You can see I just grabbed a little bit. I'm going to make a little short dubbing noodle. Not very big at all. I'm gonna grab just a little bit more. But we just want this hot spot, is like, and we call it a hot spot just because it's something that looks different than the rest of the fly. It may trigger a fish to eat or to come look just because it looks so different. Um, so often your hot spots are gonna be a, a brighter color, something fluorescent, something orange, something pink. Um, so we're gonna come here, we're just gonna make a little ball. Try to work around that hook eye the best you can. We're going to make a little ball of orange. And I've got a little bit too much on here. It's fine. I'm going to get rid of it. Okay. Just going to make sure I get that little piece of dubbing up like that. Okay. So that's my little hot spot. Just a little clump of orange. Now I'm going to go over to my black dubbing. Same dubbing, just in a different color. Okay. Like so. I'm going to make a little bit longer noodle this time. We're going to make this one about an inch and a half to two inches long. And fairly fine again. Move it all the way up there. Just gonna make a nice little dubbing noodle. Again, it's not a big deal if you put on too much, because especially with this dubbing, it's really easy to pull off. And I would prefer to take a little off than have to add it over and over and over again. So, now I'm gonna continue wrapping forward. So I'm gonna build up a nice little, because I want a fairly even body, but I'm gonna use this tinsel to wrap up and over all this. So if it's a little poofy, I'll say it's okay because we're going to come back and pull some of it down. But I'm just trying to create as even of, a, of an underbody as I can. I'm going to add a little bit more so I didn't have quite enough. Because so I want to bring this two-thirds of the way up the hook. And we're just going to have a little space in which we're going to tie in actually quite a few materials up at the front. So I'll come here. Oh, got caught on my hook eye. Get that out of the way. Keep wrapping forward. Now I'm gonna wrap, leaving, like I said, about a third of the overall fly left. So that's perfect right there. And now while I'm here, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna do a quick half hitch just to save that. Get my thread out of the way. Use the rotary function here. And I'm just gonna do a nice open spiral 
Palmer up. Just gives some segmentation and it also gives a little bit of flash into that body. Bring my thread back in. Remember, I'm going to do a couple of wraps. Wait, how did, your, how did your bobbin do that? And what is that bobbin? This is a Norvice bobbin, guys. I, I preached about these a lot, but honestly, if you don't have one, you got to at least try one. I don't care what vice you're tying on. It doesn't have to be Norvice. But it should. What, it should be, but if it isn't, that's okay. But you got to try out these bobbins. These bobbins make your life a million times easier when you're tying. I absolutely love my Norvice bobbin. It retracts, so you can set it aside, bring it back underneath. There's no winding your thread back up it. It's just where it needs to be all the time. You're not looking for your thread because you know exactly where it is. All I did is trim out that flash there, guys. And you saw that I reoriented my hook and my vise, so I want to kind of tip it back up now, so I'm, I'm looking more at the flat, the top flat edge, because that's what I'm going to be working with from here on out. Um, the next material I'm going to go ahead and put in is I'm going to go to my crystal flash. So we got some crystal flash in your kit there. Go ahead and grab a few strands. I'm just going to grab two this time, and I'm going to double them over, so I have four. And then I'm going to tie these, these guys in. So I've got four, and if they're, if they're too far hanging out the back, it's fine, because we're just gonna trim them here in a second. So I'm gonna take four strands, I'm gonna hang them off the back here, tie them on or in in front of that dubbing where you left it. Now I'm gonna trim these off right at the, if I imagine I run my scissors up the back of that hook bend, and I'm gonna trim, okay, I'm gonna trim those right there. Yeah, get this little bit of stuff out of here. And all I'm gonna do here, guys, is I'm gonna pull these up, trim them off. The scissors look sharp. They are, they are. They sure are. Sure, sure scissors are sharp. <laughs> I'm gonna grab a good chunk of deer hair here, guys. Nothing too big, or sorry, this isn't deer hair, this is moose body hair in black, okay? I'm gonna grab a decent chunk of that, nothing too crazy, nothing too big, um, but I can always, just like we did on the last fly, I'm gonna clean it out anyways. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna pull that out the back. I'm gonna stack it real quick. Once I got that stacked, I'm gonna lay it so the base of the stacker is near the back of the fly. Pull that off. I got my hair stacked right there. I'm gonna pull it out. Make sure I got all that under for out. And then I'm gonna lay this right on top so that it extends just out beyond the back bend of that hook, okay? So right about in there, somewhere in there. And this time I don't care if this flares because I'm gonna be putting lots of other stuff on top of it. So I'm gonna hold, pull hold tight once you get this. Looks like your audience is so far behind they think <laughs> they're on to next episode. All right. Uh, Sean you said that you're tying the quick fly tie right now. <laughs> no. 30 seconds, what they meant was. Yeah, no way. SOS, SOS, folks. This is the time for you guys to grab yourself a beer, a grab piddle, a, drink. a piddle, a paddle, get out the ginch knot. The good old ginch knot. Yes, we're just... Uh, so, question, where do you get shore in the U.S.? Well, what you can do, Art, is go on to RockyMountainFlyShop.net and they will ship it to you in the U.S. Because I don't know... Uh, who sells them down there? But RockyMountainFlyShop.net will ship you shore scissors. Yes, they will. Yeah, and they there's, are. The, they are the best. There's Fart Box Harper Collins. <laughs> Harper Collins. Anybody? Oh, yucky! I don't know where so, that mouth has been. Uh, make sure, guys, when you need us to slow down, you do what we just did. Yeah, just let uh, us know. The reason we say SOS is because you can type it with one hand. <coughs> while your other hand's trying to like hold your fly together so <laughs> that's all right we got all the time yeah no rush all the time in the world all the time in the world yeah my friend harper collins mr harper collins what do you want to say to the mic bud what do you want to say oh, 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 oh. <laughs> it didn't now like that now we're gonna mic. get him fired up and he's gonna knock all the camera yeah over. exactly he's like dad dad come here save me from this bearded man Oh, he likes that. <laughs> He's been oh, over yeah. here snuggling. All right. Okay, Harper. Okay. Show. It's okay, buddy. All right, Just you guys sit. caught up. Is Tim sit. trying to get... Yeah, see? There, this... <laughs> That's all right, <laughs> folks. What we can do is we want you guys to know something really cool tonight. And we just added another awesome company. 
yes, to the did. TNL fam. TNL and we fam. just want to show you guys something about them. Give you guys some time to catch up. We'll be right back. Fusion. La Fusion, happy to have them on board. Okay, awesome. you keep going. If they're not ready, okay. well, they're not tying. They're too bad. So we'll just pull up a few of those, like about halfway through the clump, put a couple uh, thread wraps down as we go. And then we're going to come in here, trim that out fairly close. Try to get as many of them out of there as you can. And then we're just going to put some wraps down. I like having these wraps, as you're going to see uh, just a second here when we add the foam. It gives the foam something to bind to a little better than just your, uh, um, than just your the bare hook, so it doesn't want to spin as bad on you. Okay, so now that we've got all that on there, we're gonna switch over here and we're gonna work with some foam. So, what, what part of the body do they get? Uh, what part of the bear do they get the hooks from? What part of the bear do they get the hooks from? Yeah, when you said. When you said about, we well, were talking about the bear hooks. Oh, the bear hooks. I just want to know which. That one's for Doug. <laughs> Save me, please, from this obsceneness. Absurd. Absurd. Okay, so we gave you a chunk of foam here, guys. That was a Doug. Doug, I beat you to your joke tonight. Yeah, you did. Not in a good way. Uh, so what we're doing Tim, is I'm gonna I can take the camera <laughs> off you and put it on me. <laughs> and the power of one button. And the power of one button. All right, folks, that's it for tonight. Come back tomorrow. <laughs> oh, man. So what we want to do here, guys, with this foam is we want to trim it so it's, um, if we were to measure off the point of the hook up to the um, the, the bare shank of this hook. See, you now you get yeah, it. Yeah, I get it. Um, Look, they like it. Hillbilly <laughs> liked it. He's a taxidermist. He gets he, he it. Gets he knows it. where the hooks come from. He does. Let us know if you know. <laughs> So I'm gonna trim that down so it's the perfect kind of width to fit that space, which I'm pretty happy with that. And then once I've done that, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come on one side of the foam and I'm gonna cut just a little triangle piece into it. So it kind of cut like an arrow chunk out of it. So it looks like that, okay? Um, now I'm actually gonna take a quick half hitch just so I don't throw this off anywhere. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a little bit of measuring. So I'm gonna take this and I want this to sit almost to the back of that hair. Not quite, probably closer to the back bend of the hook, but that's where I'm gonna have that tip of that sit. So it's gonna sit like that, okay? Once I've got that there, I'm gonna now take and I'm gonna press the eye of the hook into the foam, okay? So what I'm doing is creating a mark for myself. So if I flip that up, you can see I have a mark there now. Now I'm gonna take my bodkin, if I can find it here, and I'm gonna poke a hole right in that mark, okay? Now, we'd, we've talked about tying bullet heads because we've done it a couple times um, in the last couple weeks, but this is a different style of bullet head, so I'm gonna show you how to do this one. So what's important now is let's take our thread back and make sure that our thread is sitting right back against where that hair is. Okay, so it's sitting right there. Um, I'm gonna leave this up on top and I'm gonna poke that eye right through. So I've got it on there sitting like that, okay? And now remember I have that little chunk there that's got that, that piece cut out of it that's the part that's going to lean forward up here okay and the other portion is going to come down below and what i find easy is if i turn take and turn this sideways let's be inside yeah. here bad stripper music now <laughs> I, i'm gonna play more of this and then i'm gonna strip no we're good we're good hey, tim it's not about you no. it's not about me no. i think it's what ron is insinuating i know what he's insinuating <laughs> okay so i'm gonna lay lay that top portion down first and I'm gonna take one wrap here squeeze that down take a second wrap a little tighter okay I could have done them both at the same side same time but I like to do one than the other because I get a, a good judge of the um, 
the or sorry the overall length I want on this guy here so I've got too much foam on the bottom but that's okay what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pinch it and I'm gonna take another wrap so that I gather that bottom one take my two so now if I flip it up you can see like that okay so you can see that bottom piece of foam is too long but I don't care that's okay I'm gonna fix that in a second so I'm gonna come under like so I'll flip this upside down so I got good access to it I'm gonna come underneath I'm gonna trim that out because I want that to be fairly tight there so I'm getting to show the bottom side of this fly in the water okay take one more wrap really cinch it in that's why I'm using a little bit heavier thread so I know it's not going anywhere that's what I got up on top that's how it looks like so okay now <clears throat> what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to grab my legs you got some orange legs in there all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take them fold them over in half and cut them like so that leaves me with two little bit shorter pieces now I'm gonna tie them both in right on top. Take one wrap, two wraps, and just let the weight of the bobbin hold them down. And now what I can do is I can take this one and pull it over to that side. I can take this one, pull it over this side. And because of where we folded that foam over, it creates like in between a little crease, and those legs like to sit right in that crease. Just right there, perfectly hold, on the Hold side. tight and let Sean catch up. Oh. Usually. <laughs> is it possible? Will he ever do it? The wizard himself. The, the wizard, <laughs> the man, the myth, the wizard. Cool call the Timmy's so ideas record. about this fly are, what is this fly? Great question. It's nothing. Nothing, really. but it's everything. It's everything. So I don't know if I've truly fished the Muda Puda, but I have fished a pattern extremely similar, which I am now believing was the Muda Puda. <laughs> yeah, so you'd have been fishing a squala pattern, which is but very, it was very a, a squala, and the reverse of this was that the orange was a black, and it was the uh, it was egg, the egg sack. It was like yeah. dropping its egg, and it, it didn't work. <laughs> the fly didn't work. <laughs> yeah, and I this fly, I've only I bought actually, a bunch uh, of them. I've only fished this on, a, um, on stock fisheries, and I've done quite well with it, so... But it's, it's I, in my opinion, I think this fly leans more to an emerger style because of the shape of the hook. Um, that foam in the hair is going to stay on top of the water, but that butt section is going to hang below the water. And that's what's going to give you the appearance of a maybe a bug depositing its eggs. Maybe it's a bug trying to Maybe emerge. it's a beetle. Maybe it's a beetle. Yeah. Spider. Totally. Maybe it's a spider. Yeah, Sean's totally. not behind. <laughs> All right. Picking on. Picking on Carry Sean. On. Okay, so guys, we're, we're super close to done here. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I got those legs in place. I'm gonna take and I'm gonna trim them, okay? So length is just a th the thing here because you don't know what you're imitating, okay? So it doesn't really matter the length. I like to, at the very least, keep my legs even. I prefer a little bit shorter legs on this tie, okay? So I like them to be a little smaller. I've seen people tie it with a little bit m uh, more length on it. That's just truly, honestly up to you. Um, try them both ways, okay? Then I just want to make sure that they're fairly even. They look fairly even, like so. And now I only have one extra thing to do before we're done. So we provided you with a little bit of this Antron in orange. And what this is, is this going to be a hot spot for us to see. So I'm going to take it, I'm going to lay it right on top there. Make sure that I got a wrap that's, or I got it centered. Take a tight wrap. Then I'm going to fold this back and I'm going to create a little bit of a fold. So right here, I'm going to push this back. So I got this little bubble right there. Okay, that little bubble, and then I'm gonna tie that down. Double that over. So that's created a little bit more of a mark up front for me to see. And then I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna trim this off. You pick your length, but I like it to be just shy of the foam. And that's gonna stand up nice like that. And then all I gotta do here, guys, is I gotta whip finish this and, I, and we are done this fly. I'm gonna come in here. Just, one more just rotate so they can see which way you cut the foam, the arrow in the foam. So the the Shut apex of the arrow is going towards the front of the fly. Yeah. So I've cut the arrow shape out of it. That looks more like the fletching actually now. But Okay, so I've whip finished. I'm going to come in here and trim out my thread. And there you have it, guys. That is the Muda Puda. I know it's a little bit of a different fly, but I would encourage you to try taking it to the mountains, especially 
Um, tie them at various sizes. This is this is pretty small, but not super small, about a size 12. Um, you could tie it much, much larger, up to like an 8 or a 6, or you could go even smaller, down to like a 14, 16. Um, but yeah, tie those try. legs in varied lengths, too. Yeah, varied lengths. Try some long ones, try some short ones, see what you think. But there Gosh, you have it. that's sexy. I'd, I'd love it as a beetle. I know, I think so, too. Maybe it's Look a wasp, that. huh? It could be a wasp. It could be... Spider was thrown out there. I think it needs more legs if we we're gonna I do it. I would go with a definitely spider. more more legs for a spider. But, but one thing I've never done is asked a fish what he thought my fly was. Nope. But he eats it. But he eats it, and I'm a winner. And then I do it. a murder hornet. Murder hornet. Whatever yeah. happened to the murder hornets? Good question. I don't know. They were supposed to come and take over. Yeah. No, good question, Ryan. Yeah, actually, I this this specific color scheme is kind of the original, but it's actually not even the one that I've I've yeah. fished with. I fished with it in a, 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 sorry, an olive color. Um, also fished with it like true like stonefly color, so lighter tans. Um, but yeah, great. Also, great question, Jade. So, um, how do you keep that foam from rotating around? <clears throat> The key is when you first make your first couple um, thread wraps, you need to hold it tight and you got to suck it down hard. So that's why I said go with a little heavier thread because it allows you to do that. Alternatively, you can also, before you fold that foam over, you can put a little super glue, just a dab of it on your hook. And then when you fold that foam back over, it won't move on you. Yeah, I like although foam is easier than deer hair, and foam is fun, there is the skill set of of collecting securing and mm -hmm. then getting that one or two like tight tugs on the on the thread that secure that foam from rotating so if you go to a fly shop and you pick up a couple of the foam flies and they just spin they could be just very cheaply bought tied flies yeah so when you when you get good at it um like tim said you really be able to secure that i don't I, like the the uv or whatever you said was you say glue or yeah i think eventually you won't need that yeah that's kind of the i would say when you're first starting out tying with foam you keep a little thing of super glue with you because just one dab will secure it for you um but the problem is when you put super glue on foam yes it doesn't move but it will never move again so if you didn't have it right the first time you gotta start all yeah. over so what other things are bad on uh squirmy worm material well, any resin, apparently. Uh, <laughs> why don't you tell that story? Oh, man. I thought I was being so nice. Tied Dana you are. Like you are. You of, were. Doesn't, so this is the thing. Dana gives me these, hey, can you tie this for me? Or, hey, let's try this pattern. I tie them for him. But it, just like anything new, it, there's a process of making it work well. And Good I, point. Specifically with the squirmy worm, I tied them like a lot of them. A whole, and, a lot, like uh, a fly box. Fly. Yeah. And then... Uh, Promptly the next day, when all the resin I'd put on them had eaten through all the squirmy worm material, there was nothing but and a lot of hooks. Nothing but bare hooks left in his box. Yeah. So uh, you live and learn, <laughs> folks. And learn. Even the best oh, make yes. mistakes. Told the best. So I'm kind oh, of like okay. the engineer, and he's like the the worker bee. The, yeah. Well, I was trying to give <laughs> you, you were trying to come up with something better to yeah, say, but that's you, all you and got. you shamed yourself. Oh, there's no shame in working hard. Anyone that I've caught, I think, is the dumbest one in the river. <laughs> Talking about cutties. So, there's that. I still got the wig on because it's not hot in here. No, it's perfect. Your camera hasn't shut off because it's not the craft worker. I think... It's a, what's a good word for somebody who builds things that's intelligent? An artist? <laughs> no, that's like the designer side. But. It's irrelevant. We tied two flies tonight we like did. we said we would. We gave away a lot of really good prizes like we said we would. We had a lot of fun tonight like we said we would. <laughs> so I guess you understand. We give you our word. We'll be back <laughs> next Thursday and we'll have a lot more fun. We gave away two sets of prizes. Claude, who tuned in early, won on the number game. And then we had... I think Pam won the bingo. She did, yeah. Um, with a set of Costa sunglasses, a whole bunch of stuff from Loon at Rocky Mountain Fly Shop, fly time material from Shore Fishing. Uh, the glasses came from uh, Teak's Pawn Shop. And, uh, yeah, so super awesome stuff, super awesome flies, a couple dry flies. 
Next week. Yeah, what is up next week? We got. I'm telling you what, guys. I will admit it right now that that pine squirrel oh, game yeah. changer is going to be We're nothing short of a dog's breakfast. Uh, 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 that is the. That might have been the one of the worst flies we ever <laughs> picked. It's so bad. <laughs> and by we, he means me. I'll take all the blame. It's it's what what it <clears throat> what it is going to be is it's going to be a good time. And we're going to make fun of time. it the whole time. And we're going to blow it up. We're going to burn it. Yeah. I got some really cool graphics that are going to come <laughs> on the screen. Just just make sure you get a lighter for the end. Yeah. Uh, we're going to tie it and burn it. Tie it and burn it. And then, but mostly, you guys should come up to Trax because Trax is in Olds, Alberta, Canada. And I heard a rumor that they're going to have some Riverfest on tap. Oh, yeah. You got to come That's try it. That's what I heard. So we want to welcome Riverfest back to the TNL fam. We're going to have lots of cool stuff to give away from our friends at Bo... Did I say Riverfest? Back? Mm-hmm. I meant Bover Brewing. Um, they're yes. also going to have this streamed every Thursday at the brewery. So you guys are more than welcome to head down there. Uh, yeah. Join in on the fun at Bover Brewing. And then once a month, on the first Thursday of every month, we're going to be up here at Trax Pub. I highly encourage you guys to come up here. Yeah. Borderline begging you. Because what's cool... We'll stream here from the studio, and then as soon as this is over, and we burn the Pine Squirrel <laughs> Micro <laughs> Jimmy Game Changer leech, uh, we're going to head right over to Tracks, and we're going to hang out. We're going to party with you guys. Uh, whoever knows how long we can do that. <laughs> Tied in pink. Tied yeah, in purple. Definitely purple. Uh, 100% colors matter, because sometimes the traditional greens, olives, browns don't work, and you throw in a pink... Boom. And there's no pink flies out there, and it just works. So it does. uh, It's not over yet. The winds, the best part Mm -hmm. of the week, is about to come up, folks. So if you're new here, if you've never stuck around this long, and there seems to be quite a few of you guys that are still here, the best part of the night is upon us. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure that we've taken care of all of the business. With everybody who has given so much to make the show possible. Yeah. And check my... Check our list here. This is how I do my notes, guys. I don't. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Remember, if you're watching this on the replay, you are now formally known as the Replay Squad. Put in the comments and say, hey, I'm here. I'm the Replay Squad. And maybe I can send you some stickers. Courtesy of... The stickers company. <laughs> the, the stickers company. Yeah. Courtesy of my top drawer. <laughs> um, uh, yes. 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 Now I have to take a pee. How do I get out of this? You don't. <laughs> I don't. You're in it. I You're just, in it till the end. I did a whole tight folks. <laughs> you can you do s- it. If you sit on an orange, it it's not it it stops you from peeing. Excuse me. Yep. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> 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 no, yeah. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna can, we're gonna can the. How was the music, by the way, today? Was it a yeah. nine out of a ten, or a ten out of a ten? You let me know in the comments because hey, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> <laughs> and if it's a six, be honest. If it's a six, be honest. And uh, I never heard our good song, the one you played in yeah, before. I know, I, I know, I know. I, can, I and literally I was here looking for it. And I couldn't find it. And we had it playing before. Let me see if we can find it. It was before the show and it was so good. There it is. There it is. That's the one. Yeah, we felt like we were on a beach in Mexico drinking some mojitos. Mojitos. Yes. Right. Right. All right, all right. Does the orange have to be outside or inside the pants? Well, (laughs) let's just say... Michael is replay. Well, you you can't be replay squad if you're here. <laughs> if you're here right now, you can't be. It has to be a comment on. Yes, One Direction. We we yeah, need we someone. Do. We have to do. One yeah, direction. we have to figure that out. Me- still missing the horns though. <laughs> All right, Pogues, don't leave now. Six. Ryan is not into. So, anyways, if I said to you, Tim, speaking mm. of Ryan, mm. hey, grab me a beer. I can't. How come you can't? Well, because Ryan has our fridge. Our fridge is gone, guys. Yeah. And well, 
You're just going to have to stick around to find <laughs> out what's happening to this fridge. Oh, yeah. And then if you show up on the final episode, well, you could be going home with this custom Ooh. fridge. Makeup fridge. Oh, okay. <laughs> Jesse, it's, it's I, I love you, okay? <laughs> Will you marry me? <laughs> Anybody who loves the uh, music. Ryan, friends line, Jesse. off. <laughs> Jesse. Uh, all right. I wasn't following when I had one too many. <laughs> so, <laughs> so there's that when you when you don't know you're live, but you are live. So it is 8.54 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. So if you're on the East Coast, that's 10.54. And yeah. it's Thursday, January 27th. So <laughs> so if, if you look at your watch or, or the wall calendar and it says it's like Friday, then not, you're the replay squad. You're the replay squad. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is not Canadian music, but no. this is a cool song we heard before yeah. the show. And we thought, hey, like you, you guys understand what happens with the music. Okay. We have to pay for the music that we use on the show because you cannot use any copyright music that you don't pay for. So we use uh, on a subscription service, which costs money to use, but we need music because it gives a bit of an atmosphere. Say we wanted to use any mainstream music, not happening. No. The stream will get removed. Removed. Somebody asked a question about about these books. Yeah. Are they for sale? I will tell you this, that I will have this ready for next week. Okay. This is all the patterns that we're tying this year. All the fly pictures, all the recipes. So it's a really cool keepsake. Um, the hard part that I'm trying to figure out is it, it's, it's just not cheap. Um, and that's just from a production standpoint. So I will put it a little too pop for me. Ah, oh. <laughs> well, Brandy, we like what the does pop. Everybody want? It's actually called 20, 2010s pop. So I'll let you guys know that's going to be ready for next week. But remember, it is 70s night next week. You better dress up. Better dress up. We're going to be at Trax Pub. We're going to be doing really amazing things like time flies. It's going to be on the big screen. So anyways, welcome to what we call the the best part of the show. Part of the night. This guy's... Tim, why don't you explain to everybody? Yeah. So what? What, what is your here? win? Well, what happens here? We just share, you know, the good things that went on for us this week. Um, we encourage you to put it into the comments because we are going to read them out. Um, we want to know exactly, you know, the good things because we. It's easy to focus on the negatives, and this is an easy way to just, hey, what was your win? Um, what happened for you this week that blessed your heart or you know changed your week around for you, whatever it might be. Um, so. Contrary to what normally happens, let's go over to Dana for yeah. let us know what the his win yeah. of the week was. I got a couple things for you guys this week. Week. Uh, because it's been a great one. It truly, truly has been an absolutely phenomenal week. And so I'm going to go over a couple things and then I'm going to kind of give you guys a little metaphor here that I want you to take with you. Um, I don't know if there's any Ecamm fam in here, uh, but I was on Doc stream today. And it was super awesome, and it's kind of something we all came up with, and I'm going to share it here. So, wins. I had a great week. What did I do? Well, Sunday, uh, me and Mr. Novland, we got ourselves to the top of another mountain. And that one was cool because that was super technical, and we had to work on it together to figure out how to get up there because we got to a lot of dead-end spots in the mountain, and uh, I haven't climbed many mountains, so I don't have a lot of skills in that area. But we put our heads together and we got to the top and it was super fun. And that stuff fills my cup 100%. The other cool thing was Mr. Ryan came up this week to get his kit. And we got to sit here and hang out and BS and show him the small, not so small. See, when you come, (laughs) if you guys, anybody wants to come visit the studio, come up to Olds, whatever, shoot me a message. We have a coffee or a beer. You can see. But the first thing people say in here is, oh, it's so small. (laughs) Because it really is like 10 feet by 12 feet. It's a small square. So that was really awesome getting to hang out with Ryan. But I think the thing that really, truly is, and somebody already mentioned it here, got me going uh, awesome, was this convoy, this this truckers to Ottawa thing. Um, We try not to talk politics and, and COVID crap on here. 
but this is something that I'm super proud of because whatever the outcome, whatever the reason is, is that our country is really united right now. And I haven't seen this for a really long time, probably more so I said to Tim today, it feels like, you know, when Canada wins like the gold medal or something that everybody gets out on the street and, and waves their flags. What I thought was cool about that is at the beginning of this whole COVID thing, everybody sat there and said, we're in this together. And we truly, we truly believed that we were scared. We stayed home. We did what we needed to do to protect our neighbor ourselves because we didn't know. And we truly believed we we're in this together. Over the course of two years, there was a lot of darkness that transcended the world, a lot of hate that rose up, and I truly believe that hate took over most people's heart and views on things, and whether we want to pass the blame onto our world leaders or whatever, but we were so, we were so divisive with each other, we were so pulled apart, it was, it was, it was horrible. And, and I talked to a lot of people who said, I'm so sick of the world the way it is right now. And I feel like this rainbow effect took place. And from where we started is where we are, where we truly, truly believe uh, in Canada here right now, as, as a bunch of people kind of like took up their trucks and, and headed to protest and said, and as they went through the country and people said, we're, we're together, we're with you. The cool part was, is at the beginning is people took those flags and they turned them upside down and they said they were ashamed to be Canadian. And that probably was a true sentiment for most people for a long time. But, but, but people rose those flags and they, and they waved them high. There was, no, there was no looting. There was no burning. There was no, there was no violence. It was just literally getting to see Canadians proud to be Canadian again. And just kind of like watching all the videos of things happen. I thought, wow. Like, I am super proud to be Canadian, and hence tonight why I just kind of wanted to show off that pride. So that's truly, truly my win for the week. Mm. Super good. Yeah. Can't disagree with that at all. It's very special when you have I'll that. come back to this. Yeah, come back to that. Having a... Yeah, I just feel like just you know, piggyback on what he said, we've just been so separated for so long and everywhere we go, it's just a lot of negativity. And like you said, regardless of the reasons or the motives behind what's happening, it does feel like we have a bit of united people right now, which is awesome. Um, for me, my wins this week, uh, my girls have both been sick all week. Somehow I've managed to avoid the, whatever the illness is. They, we know it's not COVID for them, but um, been struggling, but they're getting better. Today was better for both of them. Um, so I'm super thankful that they're getting better. Um, and last week we, you know, we, my win last week was pretty simple, but just said, took it back to some of our beliefs and our scripture and what we, what we have as a foundation for both of our lives. Um, and that is, you know, we know God is good and he takes care of us. He won't test us beyond what we can bear. We know that he's going to bring us through all things. And for us and for me this week has just been very apparent, you know, the struggles at work, all these different things in my life I have going on behind the scenes. Um, if you lead with something positive in your life at the, at the forefront of your mind, it's amazing how your perspective um, on your day-to-day -day life will change and will be positive. And I think we need a lot more positive in our lives, um, especially lately. So yeah, that's my win. That's and that's a win. great segue about the positive and the negative mm. going back to the stream that I was on today. It's like, I want, I'm trying to catch up with your guys' comments, um, but like answer the question because people often ask, is this bottle half empty? or half full. And I guess that's for you guys to decide for your own perception and the lens at which you view this through. And so as, as, we, as we were chatting today on, on another live stream, uh, one guy said it's neither, it's full. Because the water has, exists, but the air exists. So truly, uh, they didn't want to focus on anything being half full, they just said it's full. This, without air up here this thing would be squashed like a vacuum so then i thought kind of something bigger and i thought you know because people said well let's focus on the positive like tim just said and not the negative which you know air could replace and be a void and i said well why don't why do we look at it as anything other than just positive and realize that this thing is full it's full of water and it's full of air and sometimes the water is going to be a little less than the air and sometimes the water will be more than the air but there's a time in your life there's a time in your week that you need a drink of water 
and there's time of the week and the day that you need a breath of fresh air. So mm -hmm. everything that exists in your cup is truly positive. It's just your perspective on how you view it. So next time you get told or asked, is the cup half full or half empty? I just want you to say it's, it's full of what I need right now. And then it's full of what I might need a little later. Um, <laughs> So yeah, take, take that with you guys and let's yeah. get back to you. So, um, Adrian, you did miss some giveaways. Alex is, I posted these, the convoy, uh, fly fusion said chili walks with the kiddos and the pups. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I believe that's Jen. That's on oh, there. Yeah, Jen. So that's awesome. You can Andy, read it. And he says, when I got to drive in the convoy on Monday from Calgary to Strathmore, totally <laughs> totally by accident, but also by luck. It was super cool to see all the support for the truckers. Uh, Jacob's dad is close to being in remission, and that is absolutely oh, that's awesome, phenomenal. Dude. Looks Richard. like <laughs> Richard, win for me was a buddy got out for the hospital alive after 20 days in hospital with COVID. Oh, that's awesome, Rich. Good to hear that he's healing up. Yeah, that's super cool. No plan. My dad is healing upgrade from his second hip operation with the last year and he's going to be ready to roll for the water this season oh yes rock mountain fly shop having a great weekend i sorry having a great week made it home to see my family today and got to tie some flies with the little guy tonight spend some time with the family thanks for a great show guys and see you next week great to have you home colin yeah buddy let me know what you're doing tomorrow yeah oh we got happy 65th birthday to the fly fisher 54 wife that's awesome happy birthday fly happy fisher birthday. 54's wife <laughs> <laughs> mr troy tracy my win is raising money for a fly tying club for a local school it's all about getting kids into this hobby and sport couldn't agree more man it's awesome yes my win is this group you guys are super inspiring and amazing folks also sitting down chatting with dana was awesome and the convoy has made me really proud to be the canadian yeah <laughs> Looks Fly like fusion. I'm guessing it's Jen again here, yeah. but yeah, super proud to be Canadian as always. But especially this week, well said, Dana. Not on work travel this week, and I was able to tie with you all, <laughs> TNL fam. Awesome, Joel. Fly Trout, my win for the week is finally finding a spare spool for my hardy reel. Yeah, he was looking for one for quite a while. Albeit has to buy the exact same uh. reel, but now have a spool for sink and dip. That's awesome. That's the Chaz. My win is having an amazing Saturday last weekend with my son, fire pit outside all days, birds singing, and just rest and fresh air. We love you too, brother. Love you, man. Yes, Mr. Dickow. Yeah, Mr. Dickow, our win after a couple of crappy weeks following what is going on with the convoy brings a tear to my eyes um, to top it off. You and Tim putting a smile on a couple of young seniors tonight mm. when you brought our grandson landing on live for a short visit. Thank you very much, fellas. See you at Tracks next Thursday. Thanks again. Oh, uh, yeah. See you there. FOF, faith over fear. Yeah, love that. So, win stands for, and it was the coach at Notre Dame flag did, and it was what? what's important now? Mm, I like that. Yeah. Brandy, keeping my COVID kid happy, reconnecting with an old friend. Getting my 2022 skunk Ooh, off. I saw that. What's nice. not my win is your your reviews of my music. <laughs> <laughs> it's too pop. Too pop. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Uh, Tom. Yeah, I wish you could say that on America. Good on Canada. Oh, yeah. Cool. This week I had my truck smashed out in front of my house before going off to work a couple of days. So I didn't start out too great, but my win is that I wasn't in the truck. So I'm healthy. And safe. Uh, looking forward to getting out in the mountains soon. Yes, he's going to come on a trek. And hopefully we see you next Thursday if you're not working. Richard, you better be coming up too because I heard that this is your stomping grounds. Yeah. Move to Florida. Engineer <laughs> says, who over designed the bottle? <laughs> Are you an engineer, Richard? Oh, man. Move to Florida. Oh, yeah. <laughs> some, some, uh, a lot of expectations that I had to try to guarantee on that. Yeah, but did you? Well, Mr. Ellison, you're out, uh, that, you're out the same day with Mr. Brent Struthers and oh, daughter. Oh yes. Yeah, so that's, that's super awesome. cool. Uh -huh. All right, Mr. Bags. My win for the week was definitely the convoy, but getting out to spend a night in the mountains last weekend, seeing a really nice bull trout, and just enjoying what the mountains have to offer. Yeah. 
Yeah. You read it. <laughs> yeah, I will. <laughs> so Janine's dad's been waiting. Well, the perceived timeline was extremely long to get this fluid off his lungs, but answered a prayer, he was able to get in way earlier than planned. Um, and was able to get the fluid off his lungs, and I know he's feeling a little bit better because of that. So we're we're very thankful for that. Yeah. And <clears throat> just. Yeah. Um, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> Come back to that. Yeah. Charlie, my win for the week after my wife and I trying to make our son's birthday special, even though we couldn't do anything. And his brother's been sick. You guys made his day super special, and he hasn't stopped calling family and friends to ask if they saw him <laughs> on the show tonight <laughs> while watching you guys. Thank you guys for all the great memories. Uh, and awesome. uh, I'm sure Grandpa's happy that he sewered him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mr. Balu. My win. Everyone is healthy around me and family is <clears throat> fam- and family, so I'm happy. Thanks, Druckers. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Cameron got his new table back from Oh, Linda. I saw that. That looks so that good. That is so beautiful. Mr. Jones, happy and healthy family. Can't uh, can't beat that. Second win, got my students time flies this week. Some ugly, some not so. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> so goes the journey. Yeah. Mr. McKenna retired, so therefore he was probably out gallivanting <laughs> down in Texas. Just logged in. The win, hanging out with my friends on the Rio Grande at Deer Camp with my high school buddies. Uh, Zapata, Texas. Awesome. Deer Camp still. Still, yeah. So foreign to us because it ends in November up here. Yeah. yeah. The Fly Fisher 54 says, My win for the week is being a proud Canadian who is behind the truckers 100%. Makes my heart melt to see the support they are getting. Cody's win is daddy daughter date for ice fishing tomorrow. <laughs> awesome. It's Scott Scott. Scott my, Scott. <laughs> my win is coaching my boy in, in uh, basketball and watching him be the best teammate out there. God is good. Amen. All Sometimes the time. Sometimes need a drink of water. Yeah. God is good. Palomero bugs and snowbirds. Not my style. <laughs> William came back. He was there, left, and he's back. So let's hear this. So I've been struggling hard this week hearing that story about the water air is a great lesson. Thank you. I'll take that to heart and create a win from it. Awesome, bud. Yes. Cole's coming up for sure. Maybe Richard is an engineer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Roger's win is finishing up some PT for a hip issue. Physical therapy. Turns out my PT is a hunter and a fisher. He gifted me a duck cave with a couple of pheasants to come. I was able to return the favor with some of my flies. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. No, it looks like Art Corey, his wife, has three-day weekends for the winter. That is awesome. Was, was Art the one who mentioned that he was retired or he was making dinner all the time <laughs> I, I think it I was i think that might be art so yeah folks that looks like the comments have slowed down for the winds um oh second wind just happened <coughs> oh well there we go it's a win for us too yeah. Looks like the wife agrees yes. that taking your float trip 101 would be the best way to learn how to fish. Getting my wife and oldest son into fly fishing is a dream for me. Yeah. Well, let us yeah. know. We'll hook you up. Uh, Donna Smith. We just wait for the comments. We had nowhere to go, folks. Mm. Uh, my win this week has been great help and support from my husband and friends as I prepare for my first experience as a guest on a podcast tomorrow afternoon. Great time with you and the TNL fam. So remember this. You, it's like this. Every t- it literally every time we go live, we sit here, say a little prayer, take a deep breath, and then crap our pants. <laughs> <laughs> and as many times like <laughs> I don't know, Barry's counted, we're probably at 70 episodes cuz I think his anniversary was 69 the episode. <laughs> but just be you yeah and it's fun and just talk and if you make mistakes or you take breaths or you say um uh ooh, <laughs> uh, it doesn't matter no just have fun and be yourself yeah so. all right we got work to be done on the fridge so we'll be here <laughs> next thursday we've got 70s night which is super awesome dress up because the winner of the dress up contest will get something better than the winner of bingo yeah that's just how it works. 
Um, That's how it works. So, yeah, really cool things happening with the show this week, guys. We got Bover Brewing back in the house. We've added Fly Fusion and the IF4 group to the TNL fam. So check them out. Make sure you get your subscription, the quarterly subscription. We'll also let you guys know. You can check out their website, Americans, Canadians. They have the, the I4s touring, and you guys can go check that out. Uh, most local fly shops will put it on. So yeah. check out their website for that. Really cool things. All things fishing, family, fun, and they too want you guys to be better people just like us. Yeah. So have yourself an incredible week. Remember, you, sometimes you need a drink of water, and sometimes you need a breath of fresh air. Your cup is always full. Go out this week, be somebody's reason to smile, and uh, get yourself one heck of an awesome outfit for next week. <laughs> yes, we'll be yes, here please. with you guys, yeah. time flies, hopefully looking like idiots. <laughs> I'm sure that that will not disappoint. Yeah. So. <sighs> not saying good? goodbye, but... Uh, what is the quote? <sighs> Cowboys never say goodbye, they say see you later. See you later. See you soon. See you soon. We'll see you soon, guys. We love you. Love you. I can feel my body cold against the concrete, but I can't seem to get enough. My mind is fixed on what it wants. I just let you beat me. Looks can be deceiving. Let you get the best of me. In bed with my worst enemy. This is a no go. I just can't take cold. This is a danger zone. Back up and get me home. This is a no go. I just can't take cold. This is a danger zone. Back up and get me Control my thoughts, but I can't stop my body talk.